O.J. Connor and Tyrone Browning team up with running back Dwayne Hogan to give Indiana their stars of the future. Memorial Stadium, Bloomington, Indiana. Today, the undefeated sixth-ranked Michigan Wolverines take on the young Indiana Hoosiers. There is tight end Jeremy Tuman, truly an All-America candidate in that position. He leads Michigan in receiving yards. Hi, everybody. Wayne Larrabee, along with Randy Wright and Jim Barber. We'll hear from Jim in a little bit. Michigan has come through one of the toughest non-conference schedules in the country, undefeated. And leading their offense is a guy that every Big Ten coach would like to have. You'll want a fifth-year senior quarterback entrusted with your offense. Well, Wayne, Brian Greasy has really developed as the leader of this offense. Now, when he came back for his fifth year, it was for a shot at the Rose Bowl. That challenge starts today as they open up Big Ten conference play. But before you get to the Rose Bowl, you have to have a solid defense. Michigan has a very good defense, giving up less than seven points a game, only 244 yards. And with the likes of Colorado and Notre Dame on their schedule, those numbers are very impressive. Well, the Indiana Hoosiers last week gave us quite a performance up at Wisconsin, losing by just one point. A gutty performance, to say the least. Cam Cameron isn't happy with the loss, but he may have found a running back in the process. Well, Dwayne Hogan had a wonderful game. He played very well, 34 carries, 124 yards, but he needs to take that next step. For a young running back, you need to show you can do it week in and week out. He has to have a big game today because they need to run the ball to beat Michigan. Been a long time since Michigan has lost to Indiana. Matter of fact, it's been 10 years. Michigan's won 22 of the last 23 games. Let's go to Studio 66, check in with Mike Leeson. All right, thanks a lot, Wayne, and hi, everybody, and welcome to Studio 66. Now, we opened a week ago with Cam Cameron watching his Hoosiers go down to the final six seconds before losing to the Badgers. If he keeps his Hoosiers that close against Michigan today, he's definitely off to a pretty good start, and this is rookie year as the head coach. Well, Penn State had the week off to sit back and size up the rest of the Big Ten. Now, keep in mind, they've dropped three out of four to Ohio State since joining the league, and they host the Buckeyes next Saturday afternoon, so Lion fans have the right to wonder how deep their focus is this weekend. Penn State starts up its Big Ten schedule today as it travels to Champaign to take on winless Illinois. The Nittany Lions have rolled the three easy non-conference wins, but that hasn't been enough to keep them in the top spot in the poll. The Lions have dropped to number two in both sets of rankings behind Florida. We're not really worrying too much about the polls right now. It's just we're trying to win all our games. And um, after the season is over with, then everything will be decided. All you can do is just go out there and win and do your best. And if uh, they don't think you're number one, what can you do? Michigan State looks to continue its winning ways. When the Spartans host Minnesota this afternoon, Nick Saban's crew is suddenly the center of some major attention. The dominating victory over Notre Dame two weeks ago has the Spartans rising in the rankings and has the players looking for the nation's respect. I feel like we should be ranked a little higher. I'm a, I know there's still people out there that don't respect us, you know, because Notre Dame's not winning. That much, but um, Notre Dame is a good team, and we are a very good team. The eyes of the nation's college football fans will be watching the shoe today. Iowa takes on Ohio State. Despite the Buckeyes' 4-0 record, the fans have been critical, and even head coach John Cooper doesn't think the team has played to its potential. Today, the Buckeyes have a golden opportunity to answer some of their questions. Meanwhile, the question surrounding Iowa is whether or not Hayden Fry's club is really as good as they've looked in the early season. Today's game is a chance to prove the Hawkeyes deserve the hype. We start from the last two years that they defeated us, and I think that, that that's going to give us a lot of motivation. I think that uh, with the way that we started out this year and the team that, that we feel that we have, you know, it's going to make it a good game. And in the Big Ten nightcap, the cardiac kids from Wisconsin take on slumping Northwestern. The Badgers have rattled off four straight wins, but they know they could easily be two and three. It took quarterback Mike Samuel heroics to pull out a victory over Boise State on September 6th. And then last week, it was Matt Davenport's dramatic 43-yard field goal with six seconds left that salvaged the win over Indiana. Somewhere along the line, you need a payday for all the work that you put in or you start losing confidence. So uh, the payday is a win and, and a win that they can get excited about. After 138 consecutive games of having 100,000 fans in the big house, Michigan puts on the whites today for their first road game. It's Michigan, Indiana coming up here on the Big Ten Network. Coming up next, we'll take a look at the recruiting wars. How do the coaches convince players to stay at home? How do the other coaches recruit against some of the national powers? And you'll get a chance to see one of the top players in the country, Michigan's Charles Woodson. When I was growing up in Pittsburgh, my father always told me to do business. 
amazing English high back arm chair. Then I better get it in front of them immediately or someone else will. That's why I value GTE Internet. In seconds, I can be online in Tampa while downloading huge files from an auction in Paris. I love shopping in Paris. Especially when it's with someone else's money. Are you going to fix that fence today? Yep. 1948 was the first year for Ford F-Series. And after 50 years, there are more tough F-Series trucks still on the road today than any other make. Ford F-Series. Built Ford tough for 50 years strong. It's been 50 years, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it's about time you fix that fence. Yeah, huh? Get huge kitchen and bath savings at Menar. Start with kitchen cabinets from Medallion. Choose from many attractive styles, 10% off. Buy 10 or more select cabinets and get a free sink base. Brighten your bath with a new shower from American Shower and Bath. Several models are on sale. Square or neo-angle styles are just $285. Don't miss the kitchen and bath sale at Menar. Save big money at that's going to do it for our Studio 66 pregame report. We'll be back to keep you up to date on all the other big games around the country. Right now, let's join Wayne Larravee, Randy Wright, and Jim Barber in Bloomington for today's Big Ten Game of the Week. Thank you very much, Mike Gleason. It is a gorgeous picture postcard afternoon in central Indiana. This is the Big Ten homecoming for the Indiana Hoosiers as they take on the Michigan Wolverines. Leading the Wolverines, Lloyd Carr beginning his third season as Michigan head coach. He is 20 and 8 overall. He served 15 years as an assistant on the Michigan staff. And in his first year, his first Indiana homecoming as head coach, Cam Cameron. He is the 24th head coach in IU football history. Michigan leads the series big. This is the 52nd meeting between the two schools. The Wolverines a 42 to 9 lead. They've won 22 of the last 23 contests. The lone Hoosier win in the last 23 years came here in Bloomington, 14 to nothing in 1987. The Crimson and Cream has been introduced to this crowd. There they are, the black helmets and the uh, red jerseys with the white pants. And let's take a look at the comparison of these two lines up front. You take a look at it, Michigan on the left, Indiana on the right. This is a big offensive line for Indiana. It's a big offensive line, and that's one of the advantages Indiana thinks they have. They don't think they can outrun Michigan to the perimeter. They think they can run it right at them. And, of course, uh, they are taking note from what Notre Dame accomplished last week, and that is Notre Dame controlled the football running right at the Michigan Wolverines dropping back deep Char Clarence Williams for the Michigan Wolverines to receive this opening kickoff and as we mentioned a beautiful day temperature in the 80s sunshiny day a little light breeze from right to left across Memorial Stadium and getting set to kick off you're looking at number 30 Andy Payne he was outstanding last week at Wisconsin connected on all four field goals of Wisconsin hitting 35, 32, 30, and then a 43-yarder that gave the Hoosiers the lead in the final minute of the ball game, only to see Matt Davenport come back and hit the game winner moments later for the Wisconsin Badgers. Indiana and Michigan set to go. And the wind a little bit stronger than perhaps suggested blows the ball off the tee, so Payne resets. Michigan at 3-0, ranked number six in the nation, and Indiana at 1-3. And and I think he's going to have to get somebody to hold that ball, doesn't he? I think you're right. Always the outside guy will come in and hold the ball because that's the safety on the kickoff team, so it's not important that he gets a full head of steam going as the ball is kicked. Now we're set. He's got the wind to his back. Good leverage into this kick. It is Williams a yard deep. Clarence Williams cut down across the 10-yard line. Aaron Warnicky makes the stop for Indiana. 
And it'll be first and 10 for the Michigan Wolverines. They are short of their 20-yard line. As we mentioned before, the Michigan Wolverines are led by a fifth-year senior quarterback. As you see them huddled up at the bottom of your screen, down to the 30-yard line, Brian Greasy. And according to the Michigan coaches, no one has prepared more diligently for this season than this fifth-year senior. Chris Floyd is the lone setback in the Michigan formation behind Greasy. A slot to the top of your screen. Greasy with a short drop. There's the slant right through the hands of Clarence Williams, the running back who was out of the slot of the far side. Fairfield in starting lineups. For the Michigan Wolverines, you're going to see a lot of number 80, Jeremy Tooman, the All-American candidate, Michigan's leading yardage receiver. On the offensive line, this is not as big a line as Indiana faced last week. It's a smaller, more athletic line, and John Jansen is starting for the third consecutive season on that line. Michigan very athletic at the guard spots. Again, the single back offense for the Wolverines. And here's the handoff to the running back off the right side, and good pursuit by that Hoosier defense. Chris Floyd got the carry. Jason Zapp came over to make the stop. On the defensive front for the Indiana Hoosiers, Ben Yard Jones always has that motor running up front, leads the defensive line of tackles. At the middle linebacker spot, Jabbar Robinson, a highly productive performer. And the cornerback that leads the defensive secondary is Joey Ellums, who up until this week was a two-way performer. Michigan facing third down. Third and about eight. Greasy in the shotgun. Greasy had some time and gets the pass on the money to the 35-yard line for a first down. Ty Streets makes the reception of the coverage provided by Joey Ellums. When you get good protection to throw the ball like Greasy has, generally you're going to find an open receiver when it's man-to-man -man coverage. It's tough to stay with these receivers one-on-one. -on -one. Look at the protection Greasy gets. Time to let the play develop. Throws it right before the pressure gets there. Streets does a nice job of going down to catch the ball in his chest. 17-yard gain of the Wolverines. A first down out of their 35-yard line. Just underway and scoreless in this first quarter. Greasy again sets up a screen this time. Chris Howard to the outside. Forced out of bounds after a gain of nine to the 44-yard line. Kaiwin Supernaw, perhaps the most productive defensive back Indiana has, forced him out of the near side. Nice call by Mike DeBoer, offensive coordinator. When Indiana is putting pressure on early, this is the second time they blitz, throw a little screen, slow that pass rush down. Howard does a nice job, gets a good block right there gets out close to that first down. That play will help Michigan during this drive and down the road because it'll make Indiana a little more cautious as they come. The receiver to the top of your screen is Charles Woodson, the All-American cornerback. And Greasy looking to go for it all. The tie streets over the shoulder. Catch made out of bounds. Good coverage provided by Joe King down the sidelines. It'll be a third down and one coming up. Not a bad call, Randy, here on the second and short. It's a wonderful call, especially with the play before being a screen. This time you go back, you know you're going to have a lot of time to throw the ball, and you go for the home run. It was a pretty well-thrown ball, but yet you've got to stay, keep the ball on the field of play. Nice job by Keene coming over and pushing him out of bounds and closing down that distance. Third and one for Michigan. Floyd, short of a first down. Jabbar. Robinson denies Michigan a first down. Jabbar Robinson may be their best defensive player. He's their middle linebacker. He's one of their captains. He's second on this team in tackles. Watch him step up. He reads the play, comes up untouched. And if you're not going to block Jabbar Robinson, you're not going to get a lot of yards. Take a look at his teammates setting this pace defensively now, forcing Michigan to punt. Hopefully for Indiana, their offense should get pretty decent field position. Walk-on kicker, Jason Vinson with the punt. Joey Ellums back deep. Allows this one to hit on the seven-yard line. Takes a Michigan hop by staying in play. And the Wolverines down it inside the Indiana 15. Break of the action. No score in Bloomington. Oh. The Indiana Hoosiers have held off the Michigan Wolverines in the early going, denying Michigan. A first down on a third down and one call, and now 
the Indiana offense gets its first opportunity of the afternoon. And Jay Rogers, who hit 13 of 22 passes, 203 yards at Wisconsin last week, comes out to lead the attack, a sophomore from Austin, Texas. And Indiana set to go, first down. The football short of the 15-yard line, near the 13. Freshman Hogan is the tailback, and they go to Dwayne Hogan, bumped into his own blocker, but able to slide past the defender, get out across the 15 for a gain of about four yards to the 17-yard line. Fairfield in starting lineups, and O.J. Connor, a freshman wide receiver, has become one of the favorite downfield targets of Jay Rogers. On the offensive line, the veteran leadership is provided up front by Chris Lee, a senior. This is only his first start. In terms of uh, season starts, he has been starting since the opening of this campaign, but this is his first year as a starter in the Indiana offensive line. Second down for the Hoosiers, about six yards to go. That's the tight end in motion. Play action and a deep drop for Rogers. Sets up a screen pass to Chris Ball, the fullback. Ball followed his blockers judiciously and picks up a first down across the 25-yard line near the 28. Rob Renus pursued from the defensive line along with Eric Mays, the inside linebacker. And the defensive line for Michigan, Glenn Steele, veteran of the defensive line, just two seniors on that defensive front. In the mid linebacking core, we talked of Sam Sword, very active, All-America candidate, and Marcus Ray runs the defensive secondary for the Wolverines. Gain of 10 on that previous play by Indiana, and the Hoosiers set up for the first down, the football to the 28-yard line of Indiana. Hogan gets the toss and gets hit in the backfield. Sam Sword, who had 14 tackles, a career high in tackles last week against Notre Dame, made the stop. Let's get out of the sidelines. Jim Barber. Jim? Wayne, earlier you talked about Indiana controlling the ball in this game against Michigan. They also want to control the clock. On many occasions on offense, when the game clock is running, they're going to keep the play clock running under five seconds before they pull off a snap. Notre Dame tried it last week. Very effective in the first half, limiting Michigan to just 22 snaps in that first half, Wayne. They really did. They ran right at Michigan. And we've got an injured Wolverine down on the field. And it looks like it's uh, Eric Mays, the uh, senior or senior co-captain from Kalamazoo, Michigan. He is quite a story. Came to the program as a walk-on and is uh, some of the glue that holds this uh, Michigan defense together. One of, one of only two seniors that starts for Michigan on defense. And as you said, Wayne, a walk-on has made his way up not only to be a starter, but a captain as well. And, he was a safety, wasn't finding much playing time as a safety, and went to Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator, and asked if he could play linebacker. So they moved him up to linebacker, and he's had a very good season so far. We take a look here, watching Mays flow with the play and where the injury come, may come in. It's a, kind of a nick block right there, and sometimes the chip shot blocks, not the solid hits, can lead to those kind of injuries, and it looked like he went right through his legs. And, got banged up looked like he took a helmet on the knee perhaps hopefully not a serious situation and Mays gets up be heading over to the Michigan sidelines in a moment Jim Herman in talking about Mays it said he's the kind of guy that at the end of practice when all the other kids want to get back to their dorm and enjoy their time he's always out there trying to do more things and trying to get better in practice and almost more of an inspirational leader as you see the Michigan teammates Great concern with how he's going to be uh, for the rest of this game and right now. And Mays was helped up and now he's coming off pretty much under his own power. But boy, it doesn't look like he'll get back for uh, the rest of today. Jim Herman, there he is right there, the defensive coordinator of the Michigan Wolverines. He switched some things around to their coaching staff and this season and Herman is the defensive coordinator. Michigan's uh, balanced attack this season has helped spearhead that three and zero start. Take a look at this. What Michigan is looking for is balance in yardage not necessarily in play calls. Indiana resumes offensively second and twelve off a loss of two and they go to Hogan deep around the edge and Hogan is cut down. Boy I tell you excellent coverage provided on the flank of the defense by Andre Weathers. James Hall also in the vicinity for the Michigan defense. Rob Renus flow to the football as well. 
Well, Jim Herman said the best thing about his defense right now is they are playing fundamentally very sound as a unit. Andre Weathers doing a nice job from his cornerback position coming up. There's not a real superstar on that defense other than Woodson. He's a guy everybody knows about. But no one is really stepping up and, and grabbing the attention. They're playing very well together, and that's why they're so sound. So a third and eight call now for Indiana from the Hoosier 30-yard line. Chris Gall in motion. A deep drop again. Rodgers hits Gall, but he has no shot of the first down. Excellent coverage by James Hall in the Michigan linebacking core. It is the fourth down gain of a yard out to the 31-yard line. Michigan's defense doing the job shutting Indiana down after that one first down. And even though now they have the wind at their back for this punt, always a dangerous threat with Charles Woodson back there to return this punt. Michigan looks to get pretty good field position. Charles Woodson, who broke the game open between these two teams last year. Sikowski's punt straight on, and Woodson at the 25, dancing by a defender at the 30. Woodson caught from behind as he slipped near the 40-yard line, and Michigan will put it in play. First down, Robinson made the stop on the play. Wolverines get good field position for their second drive of the afternoon. 40-yard line of the Wolverines. Brian Greasy lots of time, swings it out to his running back, Chris Howard. And Howard approaches the midfield marker on a gain of nine yards out to the 49-yard line. Ben Yard Jones and Joey Ellums converge on the tackle for Indiana. Michigan showing some respect for this Indiana run defense. They've been throwing their first couple of possessions here, even though this is just a swing pass. Greasy does a nice job looking downfield. Nobody there. Get the ball to Howard. Now he becomes a running back. He finds the hole. He ducks his head, delivers the blow. And again, what Mike DeBoer, the offensive coordinator at Michigan, told us last night was that Michigan is going to look for balance on first down, run to pass. And they not, only, to do here. Exactly right. they not only want balance in terms of yardage, but they want it in terms of downs also. They feel if they really keep Indiana guessing what they're going to do on first down, that will lead to a lot better success on first down. Well, the last time Greasy had second down and short, he went deep to tie streets. Let's see what he tries here. No score early going in this first quarter. That's Shaw in motion. On the ground of the freshman. Thomas comes up short of the first down. Boy, Indiana has shown great pursuit on the defensive uh, front. Let's get down to Jim uh, Barber on the sidelines, Jim. All right, Wayne, let's get back to the injury of Eric Mays, a right knee sprain right now. They're going to ice it down and take a look at it at halftime, perhaps do some examination at that point. The one thing we know, he's got some mobility, but he is in a lot of pain, Wayne. All right, Jim. And hopefully, uh, Eric Mays will be back in this ball game. For Michigan, a loss of a yard in that play. It is third down. Almost two yards to go for Michigan. And again, Thomas. And again, he draws a crowd, but good strength on the second effort gets him the first down to Hoosier territory at the 49 of Indiana. To Mike Gleason. And Mike, what do you have on that big matchup down south, Florida State, Miami? Well, Wayne, Miami at Tallahassee. The Canes are one and three, so Butch Davis says might as well go for it on fourth down, fourth and three. Seminoles hold, take over on down. No score from Tallahassee, Wayne. Thank you, Mike Gleason. Eric Mays being carted off to the uh, locker room for Michigan. And again, as Jim Barber reported, they'll check out that knee injury. Hopefully, he'll be back in the second half. The Wolverine offense with a first down. And Greasy to the air. And the pass appeared to uh, cross up the intended receiver, Charles Woodson. Woodson look, looking for it on the outside shoulder, Randy. He got it on the inside shoulder. Well, one thing when you're a defensive back and you come over sporadically to play offense, maybe your routes aren't as precise as a guy that plays at full time, especially on a timing pattern like that. Wide open, Greasy threw the ball on time, threw it to the inside. But as you can see, his coach is telling him, no, don't turn that way. You turn the other <laughs> way, that's where the ball's going to be. Second and ten now. Well, you'll excuse Charles on that one. I think they'll give him another yeah, chance. I think they'll go to him again. Yes, indeed. Motion out of the backfield by Williams. And did Greasy take too much time to get this play called? And only flags are down early. Michigan plagued by uh, penalties earlier this season. Fire to the snap. All start on the offense. John Perry calls a false start, not a delay of game. Michigan had 21 penalties in the first two games of this season, and Randy, most of them were on offense, and that was particularly frustrating to the Michigan coaching staff. And where it really hurts is Michigan has not made a lot of big plays. Their longest run is 27 yards, only one run over 16, so when you get a, a second or third and long, it's harder to get that first down without that ability to get that big play. Second and 15. 
Williams again in motion. Greasy rushed right away, sets up a screen pass nicely to Chris Floyd. Floyd into the open field. Chris Floyd still on his feet. Out of bounds near the 10-yard line of Indiana, the biggest play of the game to date. Zapp forced him out in pursuit. Jason Zapp, but the Michigan Wolverines break up big one, 38 yards. Another screen to try and offset this rush coming by Indiana. You see the lineman come through almost untouched. Greasy does a nice job of holding it under pressure till Floyd turns and is ready to catch the ball. And now he just becomes a running back. He's got linemen in front of him, breaks that tackle, and a rare big play again for Michigan through the air. So Michigan to the line of scrimmage now with a first down just outside the 10-yard line of Indiana. Anthony Thomas met in the hole by James Lamar with help from Curtis Randall L. and Jabbar Robinson. Very little, if any, gain whatsoever. That was a 43-yard pass play a few moments ago, not a 38-yarder. 43-yard pass play to get Michigan this possession deep inside Indiana territory. Well, as you get into the red zone down here, you see Michigan's been down there 13 times and have had success on 12 of them, with 10 of them coming to touchdowns. But most of the success today has been through the air. Once you get to the goal line, harder it is to throw, the more you have to run. Slot at the top of your screen, offset eye in the backfield. Greasy to the air, to the end zone, had Shaw wide open and overshot him. Had to be some busted coverage back there, Randy Shaw popped that wide open. But Brian got a little bit too much air into that one, and it floats out of bounds incomplete. Michigan had two receivers over to the left side there, and they ran what looked like may have been a, a little pit play. See, pretty good protection. Michigan seeing this play work success successfully against Indiana in the past. This time, defense back, defense, fell, down. defense back fell down. Ball being thrown out of the end zone. Obviously, he fell down before Greasy threw it, or he would have just taken everything off of it and played pitch and catch. Third down for Michigan. They can get a first down inside the one. And they vacate the backfield. Everybody out for a pass. Blitz is on. Quick throw. Clarence Williams. And Williams met at the nine-yard line. Curtis Randall L. came quickly on the blitz. But really, when you take a look at it, they picked it up very well in the interior of the defense. A gain of maybe a yard or two, and that was it. And, Wayne, it's hard to run a screen very quickly. You have to let the defense come through. Here, this screen is set up so quickly, you don't let the defense react back into the backfield, and Williams has nowhere to go after he catches the ball. And Awali Agunlia, the principal defender on the play. And now the field goal unit is on. Craig Baker for a short field goal, and he gets it through the uprights. Baker on a 27-yard field goal, and the Michigan Wolverines take the early lead on homecoming in Bloomington. I was looking for an onion, a really big onion. Bloom an onion as big as your head. One bite of that onion, and bam, you were hooked. I mean, you want to have more and more, and you think about it, you dream about them, you just got to have them. And you can't stop, and you go anywhere, no spices. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you, I was consumed by that onion. And that onion was consumed by me. It's easy to get a blooming onion. Get to Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just rice. How's about a nice, juicy steak to go with that blooming onion? Steak? Hey, I didn't I think of that. I love steak. Big, juicy. Five years ago, Channel 53 stopped its local news. Your lives didn't stop. Your family... No trading cards. No limos. So why? Because she is an athlete. Just like a football player. Just like a basketball player. Just like a baseball player. GTE is proud to be the official telecommunications consultant to the NCAA and the Big Ten because of her and the pure spirit of college athletics. Five years ago, Channel 53 stopped its local news. Your lives didn't stop. Your families kept right on growing. Matter of fact, your job probably kept you busier than ever. Well, that was then. This is now. ABC 53 News Now. I'm Joe Parker. Weeknights at 6 and 11, I'll bring you the stories of people and events making news right here in Lansing. And I won't stop. Watch Joe Parker cover the stories of your life on ABC 53 News Now. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Jim Barber back in Bloomington on homecoming. A picture postcard afternoon. Jay Feely getting set to kick off the Michigan Wolverines. Wolverines have just taken a 3-0 lead. A little over seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Feely's kick squibs. Taken by one of the up backs across the 25. 
and pretty good running production. Out across the 25-yard uh, line by Kevin Glazer. Uh, pull back. Let's go back to Studio 66 for another update on Florida State, Miami of Florida. Mike Gleason, what do you have for us? Well, Wayne, following that defensive stand, the Knowles goes 68 yards and 11 plays. Feaster searches for the corner. He finds it right there on third and goal. Fourth rank, Florida State 7-zip over Miami. Wayne? Thank you very much, uh, Mike Gleason. Nine play scoring drive for the Michigan Wolverines resulting in the 27 yard field goal by Baker covered 51 yards of those 51 yards 43 of them came on that one screen pass to Floyd so other than that Indiana did a nice job of tightening up Jay Rogers off play action hit from behind able to scamper away looking to make a play and does Hogan stiff arming his way downfield in the Michigan territory of the Wolverine 42 yard line Tommy Hendricks finally forced him out nice job by two young players Rogers the quarterback and Hogan the tailback Rogers fighting off the blitz standing in the pocket is strong enough in order to, to fend this off looking downfield has good protection to begin with blind side doesn't wrap him up he gets away now Hogan seeing that doesn't give up on the play he sees the quarterback roll that's what you teach your kids from day one of football when the quarterback rolls roll with him nice job by Hogan 24 yard pass play to the Michigan 42 Indiana on the drive and again Rogers off some play action this time screens it out to Chris Gall got a good block from Lee the center Goal down the sideline to the Michigan 20 yard line. Hendricks and Ray on the stop. Another first down, Indiana on a well executed screen. Chris Gall, Cam Cameron calls the best all around player on his team right now. Nice job, little misdirection. You bring Gall underneath the defense. You get lost sometimes when you do that, and then he just picks up excellent blocks. Look at the blocks by these linemen downfield. That's where, as a running back, you're used to following those linemen blocking. Wide receiver doesn't quite do it as well. Nice job by Gall. Chris Gall, who came into this game with 22 receptions to lead Indiana. Hadn't caught a pass before this season. 23-yard pass play there. That's Gall in motion across the Indiana offense. And a fumble. And Michigan's got it. Rogers slipped and fell as he tried to make the handoff. And Michigan recovers. This is an unforced era. Indiana simply can't have. Once you lose your balance as a quarterback, pull the ball back into your stomach. It's a, it's a dead play. It's a busted play. Go back on second down. Don't try and force something to happen. And the Indi scramble. Indi uh, Michigan being very quick to pounce on that. Glenn Steele with the recovery and the Wolverines turn away the Hoosiers. Take a look at what Michigan has done. They've scored 21 points off opponents turnovers. They start this drive at the 23 of Michigan. And Chris Howard not going very far at all. Kywin Supernaw who plays very close to the line at strong safety Randy Wright made the stop no gain. He's been the player that really carries this defense. A free safety has a lot of tackles for a free safety. See him come up here, makes a tackle coming from the outside, does a nice job of reacting, getting in there, wrap those backs up around the legs. They'll break a lot of tackles when you hit them high. Hit them low like that, they don't break that many tackles. He leads the Hoosiers there with 35 tackles. For a free safety, that's a lot. Michigan on a second down. Gracie trying to slant. And it's incomplete. Ty Streets, the intended receiver. To Studio 66, Mike Gleason. Well, Wayne Rutgers and West Virginia Mountaineer fans say don't leave Amos Zeroway off of the Heisman ballot. This one goes for 40 yards. He has 55 yards on six rushes. They score on the very next play. And right now, West Virginia leads Rutgers 14 zip. Let's go back to Wayne and Randy. Thank you, Mike. Well, Michigan facing a third down call here. Third and a little bit more than 10 yards to go. And the Indiana crowd getting behind this Hoosier defense. Reese. Clarence Williams wrapped up by Jabbar Robinson. Far short of a first down. You see the fans appreciate the effort by the defense. And look at the players show that excitement. You think they're not ready to play this game. 
It starts with pressure. Greasy doesn't get time to look downfield. He has to come up here and throw the ball short. Then he takes the hit right afterwards. So you had good pressure, yet you still had good coverage man-to-man -man downfield. Ellum's back deep to receive this punt. From Jason Benson, the snap over his head. Benson, however, they did not have a rush on, and Benson able to get the kick away. And it backs up, takes an Indiana hop, and the Wolverines down into the midfield marker. So once again, the Hoosiers get good field position to start a drive, this time in plus territory. They trail the Wolverines by three. Your All-Stars. Performing All-Star feats. They're the reason we make Ford Windstar with over 40 standard safety features. In fact, Windstar is the only minivan to earn five stars, the highest possible rating in government crash tests. A pretty spectacular feat in itself. Don't your all-stars deserve Ford Windstar? Created for the most important people in the world. We're asking people to try Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Toasted, a good flavor. I don't know how to describe it, but I, I like the taste. Try the championship taste of Wheaties. They're good. You know what you're getting when you eat Wheaties. The aluminum in your car radiator is as thin as this sheet, and it's the only thing between you and a breakdown. But Preston Antifreeze bonds with aluminum, forming a zone of protection against corrosion and temperature extremes. Protect your car in the Preston zone. Can lightweight aluminum cylinder heads enhance engine performance? Is it possible to see the future in a rear view mirror? If race cars inspired us to use a double wishbone suspension, can you handle that? These are the questions. This is the answer. Dodge Stratus. Starting under 14.4, 18.4 impressively equipped. Vincent in punt formation. Now watch what happens on the snap from Jeff Holtry. Up over his head. He's able to field it, but Indiana does not have a rush on, and he's able to get the punt away. Watch Vincent. He does a nice job. He's got great hands to go, but watch his head. Right away, he looks. There's nobody there. It's okay to go ahead and punt. Good presence of mind. Back live, Dwayne Hogan on a quick call. Gets very little, if anything. May have lost a half yard to the 50-yard line as the Michigan defense begins to stiffen. Remember last week against Notre Dame, Michigan's defense was put in precarious position after precarious position to the fourth quarter. Three Michigan fumbles resulted in the defense having to turn away Notre Dame from deep in uh, Michigan territory. This time, Indiana's defense able to step it up a turnover by the Hoosier offense. Second down and 10, Hogan around the end, and he gets a couple of yards. To Studio 66, Mike Gleason back to Florida State. What do you got? Well, when the uh, Seminoles strike again, the Seminole rushing attack non-existent, so Busby rolls out, hits E.G. Green for the touchdown. Miami gets a hand on the extra point, but Florida State moves up 13-zip. Let's go back to Bloomington. Well, I'll tell you, Mike, since uh, Miami won its opener, it's been a tough sled down there for the Hurricanes. And Florida State is not a team you get healthy on very quickly. Third down and about eight yards to go now for Indiana. Out of the shotgun, Rodgers. Quick throw to the flank. And Marcus Floyd fumbled the football. I believe Indiana got it back. It looked like uh, Chris Lee got it back, unless they uh, ruled that he was down by contact before the fumble. But Indiana far short of that first down. Rob Renus defending from the Michigan defensive line, a gain of a couple of yards, fourth down. Again, Michigan's defense swarming over there. Just a quick screen again for Indiana trying to bust a play on the outside. Look at all these Michigan defenders over here. One, two, three. Weathers is coming up. The ball's loose, but after he hits the ground, but a third long, it's going to be tough when you play that many defenders. Sutkowski trying to pin Michigan deep. The Hoosiers have it covered well. And it'll be first down from the 12-yard line. One member of the Hoosier kick team should have grabbed it at the 8-yard line. It was down near the 13, and that's where Michigan will start first and 10. Jim Barber, what do you have on Cam Cameron? Well, Wayne, you mentioned the criticism that Cam had for his football team after the loss in Wisconsin, even though they played well. Well, hundreds of people across the country watching the game here had a chance to call Cam and also send in cards and letters saying, hey, this program looks good. It's coming back. Cam said, wait a minute. We count the progress by victories, not by how we're doing. 
All right, Jim, first down now for Michigan in the football to the 13-yard line. Wolverine territory. They lead 3-0. Chris Howard tripped up, and I believe Damian Gregory got a piece of him in the defensive line. Gain of a yard or two. Time now to take a look at the GTE Academic All-American Team Member Spotlight as selected by the Collegiate Sports Information Directors of America. And Kelly Holmes is featured this week, Michigan softball. Major is accounting. Well, with the ever-changing tax laws, Randy, with plenty of work in that field. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Second and nine now for Michigan. Greasy hit as he throws. Ty Streets is out there with a pass off the mark. They are not afraid to go at Joey Ellums with Ty Streets. Adewale Agunlia put the pressure on Greasy. Ty Streets has become Brian Greasy's favorite target, but you have to have time to throw, especially when it's a long pattern. You have to have time to let the receiver get down there. And again, Greasy taking another shot. We've seen him on his back two or three times already. We're still in the first quarter. So it is third and nine for Michigan. The Wolverine 14. Slot to the top of your screen. Greasy looking that way. Lots of time. Got a first down. Russell Shaw running free. Out to the 38-yard line with a first down. Lamar and Coleman team up on the stop along with Ellums. Boy, Wayne, John Haycock, the defensive coordinator for Indiana, told us, you know, in Michigan does not have one great player on offense. They can beat you with a lot of guys. This time, it's Russell Shaw. He's sitting out here wide open. They've had big plays to Floyd. They've had big plays to Howard. They've had big plays to Streets. And this time, Russell Shaw is the guy. 24-yard pass play to Shaw. First down for the Wolverines at the 38-yard line. Michigan territory. Greasy again, looking to the air. Hits the running back, Chris Howard, who's escorted to the chalk marks on the near side at the 42-yard line on a gain of four yards. Good pursuit from Ben Yard Jones and Javar Robinson in the Indiana secondary. And that's where you see Brian Greasy's experience and his level-headedness at the quarterback position come into play. Nothing open downfield. He gets flushed out of the pocket. He can still pick up a secondary receiver and make it a positive play. In the final two minutes of this first quarter, Michigan on top by three. Second down for the Wolverines and about six yards to go. Reese to Howard. Got a good block off the flank of the offense that time by Chris Zeman. And Howard appears to be very close to that first down. In fact, he's picked it up. Let's go to the studio. Studio 66, Mike Gleason, Penn State and Illinois underway. That's right, Wayne. Uh, the Lions back in action. Mike McQuarrie wastes little time. This is touchdown pass number eight goes to field. And the Lions, seven zip over the fighting Illini. Back to Wayne and Randy. Thank you, Mike. I was greatly mistaken. It is third down coming up for Michigan. Third and about two yards to go. Once again, the Hoosier homecoming crowd trying to exhort his defense to make another play. Contact made across the line. It may have been Damian Gregory who came off prematurely. Let's see if he was drawn off sides. It looks like it's going to be first down for Michigan. John Perry is the referee. Prior to the step, offside, on the defense, five yards penalty, first down. Wayne, that's the easiest weapon a quarterback has, to be able to use his voice to pull the defense offside. That time, got him a first down. And the football just inside Hoosier territory. Greasy out of Miami, Florida, Columbus High School. Chris Floyd following his blocking. And once again, Jabbar Robinson breaking through to make the hit on the play. Agunlia and Lamar assist as well, but it's a gain of almost five yards. Robinson having a big day so far for Indiana's defense. What they want to do is force those Michigan running backs to run inside. They feel they don't have the speed to keep with those guys on the outside. Your linebackers and your defensive end push them back to the middle. That's where your middle linebacker can make the hit. So but far, it's not been too bad. On the other side of the ball, Indiana feels that it has to run right at Michigan because the Hoosiers don't have the speed to get around the end. Second down, and again the handoff to the running back in Chris Floyd. This time is met by a wave of red flag 
Indiana Hoosiers, and he picks up maybe a yard down to the 44, where Michigan will face a third down. And Kywin Supernaw led the charge. Supernaw, the senior, out of Oklahoma. This guy's a, a free safety. He's really built more like a strong safety. 6'1", 210 pounds. He's got the attitude of a strong safety because he's not afraid to stick his head in there. Michigan, 50% on third down call. Three of six. Third and about five. We see a shorter drop. Got Howard out on the flat. First down and more inside the 35-yard line. James Lamar made the tackle, and it's a first down for the Michigan Wolverines at the 32-yard line of Indiana 14-yard game. When you're having trouble running to the outside, throw it to your backs in the flat. That's just another way to get it out there. Now it's so hard to tackle a back one-on-one -on -one in the open field. Howard makes his man miss, turns it into a nice gain on really what was just a simple little pass play. Howard, 215. The other back they've been handing it to, Randy, is 6'1 and 231, Chris Floyd. So these are a couple of bangers out there. They're, they're seniors. They've been here before. First period winds to a close. Brian Greasy and the Michigan Wolverines lead after the opening stanza, three to nothing. This is a battery. It has positives, it has negatives. The positives, it makes your car go. The negatives, there are no negatives. Not if you come to NTB, National Tire and Battery. We sell diehards, the most preferred name in batteries since well, who knows? Give us a buzz. Think positive. NTB, National Tire and Battery. We're everything you want, nothing like you'd expect. Need a hand? No worries, mate. Nothing that a juicy steak and a bloomin' onion wouldn't fix. Wanna join us? Us? He gets a little cranky when he's hungry. For an awesome steak and an Aussie good time, get to Outback Steakhouse. Come again. You're a kicker, right? No rules. Just right. Hey, kid. Can I have some? Not right now. Why not? There's no candy stuff. Now kids can get a classic little golden book. Free from cakes with one proof of purchase. Mmm, cakes. I can't get any reading done around here. Cakes, <laughs> kid tested, mother approved. You're right, Jim Barber. Michigan leading at the end of one quarter. And the Wolverines are on the drive. They've got a first and ten from the 32 yard line of the Indiana Hoosiers. A warm, sunny afternoon here in central Indiana. Homecoming for the Hoosiers and the Wolverines. Now the Hoosiers in a blitz. Clarence Williams finds a big hole. Kywin Superno makes the tackle across the 20, but it's a gain of 12 yards to the 19 of Indiana. When you've been running or trying to run to the outside and you catch a team in a blitz, you can sometimes spring a guy right to the middle. Take a look at the block on the right, little trap play, huge hole opening up, and then you see alignment blocking downfield. John Jansen throws a nice block downfield. That opens it up for Thomas. This is a big defensive stand now for Indiana. It's really 3-0 here early in the second quarter. Michigan threatening. And on the right side, it's Chris Floyd again, running through arm tackles down near the six-yard line. First down on a gain of 13 yards. Well, whether you call Howard or Williams or Thomas or Floyd, you could just go down the list. They have so many weapons that can beat you. Take a look at this hole. You run inside, now you get Indiana thinking inside. You run outside, nice cut by Floyd, and a missed tackle by Joe King. You can't afford to miss tackles in the secondary. You may be the last guy between the ball carrier and the goal line. Zeman and Jansen on the right side of the Michigan offensive line have been opening the holes now on this drive as Michigan faces a first and goal at the six-yard line of Indiana. And Greasy, a quick handoff this time to Howard, try to slip him up the middle, and he gets about three yards on the play. Down to the three-yard line, Lamar, the linebacker, made the stop. 
We're in Bloomington, Indiana. Memorial Stadium, Michigan leading 3-0 early going second quarter. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Jim Barber, good to have you with us on this sun-splashed afternoon. Second down and goal to go for the Michigan Wolverines. That is not the biggest offensive line you'll see, but it's one of the most athletic in the country. Howard trying to get around the end. Howard skips over the pylon for the touchdown. Chris Howard, the senior out of River Ridge, Louisiana, puts the first touchdown on the board today. And the Michigan Wolverines lead nine to nothing. We talked about Michigan speed from the backfield around the corner. And this time, you're not going to bring him down with an arm tackle. And Howard's got enough speed to get around that corner and into the end zone before he runs out of field. And that's just good, solid speed by a good bat. Baker for the point after. Greasy got the hole down, and the kick is good. Michigan extends its advantage on this run by Chris Howard to 10 nothing over Indiana. We're asking people to try Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. You know what I, I love is the texture. They're crunchy, and they don't get soggy. These Wheaties are awesome. It's a great start today. Try the championship taste of Wheaties. Better eat your Wheaties. <laughs> Ford Explorer, when no town's big enough for the both of you. Have you driven a Ford lately? When sports cream, when legs are sore, when backs ache, when muscles hurt. Why sports cream? Rubbing it in brings fast pain relief. No medicine smell. Why sports cream? Because it works. What explains this passion? Is it physical attraction or the chance to save money? The roasted beef is very juicy. The cheddar cheese is so hot. Is that what is driving so many people wild? Or is it the fact that the Arby's melt is now just 99 cents? Sex is so much easier to figure out. You can go anywhere and get filled up, but you can only get a 99 cent deal this good at Arby's. Early in the second quarter, the Wolverines lead 10-0. Jay Feely getting set to kick it away. Joey Ellums right there in your screen. One of the deep backs for the Hoosiers. Take a look at the time of possession. Heavily in favor of Michigan. This is something that Indiana could ill afford to have happen. This kick booms deep into the end zone. Ellums will stay there with it. Indiana will take over at its 20-yard line. Particularly is important, Wayne, with that time of possession as Michigan has done something with it. They have finished off their drive by putting points on the board. First the field goal, then the touchdown. On this particular scoring drive uh, for Michigan, 12 plays, 87 yards to pay dirt. Four minutes, 31 seconds time of possession. And again, what we have seen for Indiana is they have not been able to get their ground attack on track so far today, Randy. Oh, they need to be able to run the ball in order to stay in this game, control the clock a little bit, and give their defense a rest. If they don't do that, their defense is going to be out there all day. Maxwell in motion. Rogers, Chris Gall in the flat. Woodson made the stop, gaining of about three yards. And Randy, last week, Wisconsin took away the fullback in the passing lanes. This week, we're seeing Gall in evidence a little bit more. What is Michigan doing differently that in Wisconsin did last well, week? Michigan had much better corners, so they let their corners cover the wide receivers, so they vacate the flat. That opens up the backs in the flat. Also, Indiana came in today wanting to throw the ball to their backs a little more because they felt they were going to have three options. First read, second read, throw it away. You're not going to see Jay Rogers back there and look all over the field. Goal in motion. And Rogers again to the air. Penalty marker is down. And the pass incomplete. Randy Maxwell, the intended receiver, could not quite hang on. And the coverage provided by Weathers. Andre Weathers in the secondary of the Michigan Wolverines. 
Illegal procedure of the preliminary indication against the Indiana Hoosiers. False start to be exact. To get inside the huddle of your favorite Big Ten team, go online at www.bigten.org for all the football and conference news from around the Big Ten. Illegal formation on the offense. Penalty is refused. Third down. So third down for Indiana. Third and about eight. That is not Indiana's best position third and eight I believe they're one for 30 when they have third down and eight yards or more to go not a very high successful rate don't make a lot of first downs Indiana with a cluster to the bottom of your screen and out of that cluster gall in motion Rogers under pressure Rogers wrapped up and sacked back near the 10 yard line Joaquin Fazell the defensive end out of Fort Valley, Georgia. Makes the sack and loss of yardage back to the 11. Michigan is not a big pressure team. They only had three sacks coming into this game. And you see Fazell there just whip his man and comes around and wraps up Rodgers so as not to let him get away. Indiana's got five men blocking on three. And Fazell splits them, comes back and gets a big sack. Sutkowski in punt formation. Right on to Woodson, who fields it at the 46 of Indiana. And look out. Woodson inside the 30-yard line to the 27, and Michigan in a position to strike once again deep in Hoosier territory. 10-0 Michigan with 11.58 to go, first half. For the Indiana 27-yard line, but a holding call early on that return out of the 46-yard line of Indiana, and back them up 10 yards from there off the holding penalty against Michigan. A 29-yard penalty means the Wolverines, instead of starting in plus territory, begin this drive back to their 44-yard line. Still not what you would call bad field could position, say, but you know, could, you could, could have been, what it could have been. Could have been better, but this isn't bad, as you said. First out of the 44. Clarence Williams, the long set back, and he gets the call to the flank. There's that Michigan speed we talked about, a gain of about 10 yards. Into Hoosier territory to the 46-yard line. Robinson, King, and Supernaw, trio, collaborate on the tackle. What this speed does also, Wayne, is when you get to the corner so quickly, you go one-on-one -on -one with the defensive backs. You don't even give the linebackers a chance to slow you down. And when you let a back get his momentum going that for, for that long a period of time, it's just so hard to bring him down one-on-one. -on -one. Lawrence Williams, who was the starter, a junior out of Detroit, Michigan, last year he was a starter, gained over 800 yards rushing. He's sharing time now with uh, Chris Howard and Anthony Thomas. Uh, true freshman running back who's seen some action here today. Greasy calls for a timeout here. Apparently by the time Michigan got the play in Brian didn't have enough time to call it at the line. So rather than take the penalty he takes the timeout. 11.29 to go. Randy Wright, Jim Barber back in Bloomington, Indiana, Michigan at the 46 of the Hoosiers on a first down. Greasy screens it out. Chris Howard well set up play and Howard down to the 35 yard line on a gain of about 11 yards. James Lamar made the stop. Back to Studio 66, Mike Gleason. Well, Wayne, Pittsburgh trailed Temple 7-3, but not anymore. Terry Murphy from Pete Gonzalez, 15 yards for the touchdown. And the Panthers move in front, 10-7 of the Rutgers. Let's go back to Bloomington with Wayne. Thank you, Mike. That uh, Pittsburgh program developing a little bit for this season. First down for the Michigan Wolverines from the 35-yard line. Who's your territory? Floyd broke the tackle attempt by James Lamar and picks up about the three yards. When Cam Cameron told us yesterday that when you find a play that works, you can stick with it in the college game two, three, four, maybe even five times. In the pro game, you can't do that. You take a look at total yards. Most of those yards have come on one play, the screen play. That's what's worked so well for Michigan. They're sticking with it until Indiana shows they can stop them. Of the 188 yards, and over half of them come on that little screen dump they, they use. And obviously, screen plays are, are all quarterback for the most part, aren't they, Randy? The timing and everything else? The, the Everything's all quarterback. <laughs> well, I expect that. <laughs> That's what I expect from you. Here's Greasy back to throw, and the pass knocked down incomplete. Knocked down at the line 
Agunli, I believe, was the man who got a hand on it and knocked it away. Third down coming up now for Michigan. Let's see if we pick it up again, Randy, at the line. Take a look at the right side of your screen. Agunlia coming through, gets good penetration, and as every lineman is taught, get your hands up. If you can't get to the quarterback, pushes the back, now throw it away from him, number seven. If you can't get to the quarterback, get your arms up, try and if you don't knock the ball down, at least get in the vision of where the quarterback's looking. Michigan's leading 10-0, 10 10-20 to go, first half. Third down for the Wolverines. Third and about six, and Greasy, another screen pass to Howard. Howard able to beat McGrath around the corner for a first down to the 23-yard line of Indiana. Good, good job of recognition by Howard and Greasy. Indiana, watch the right side. They're bringing more men than Indiana can block. The quarterback sees that. The Michigan can block. The quarterback sees that. The running back sees that. The, re the running back goes hot. He knows he's getting the ball right away. Greasy got it out to him. Then there's plenty of room to pick up the first down. Randy, that's some pretty good speed that got Howard around that end, wasn't it? That's a surprise. Michigan's back has some good speed. <laughs> a little counter play. And Clarence Williams gets the call for some tough yards down to the 20-yard line, gained about three in the mid-portion of that Indiana defense was there to stop him. Ben Yard Jones, we talked to him earlier today. James Lamar has been active as well, number 18 in that Hoosier defense. Well, what you see with Michigan also, Wayne, is you've called Williams and Thomas and Howard. They're mixing in their backs, so they're staying fresh. It's the same Indiana defense, like you said, Robinson, Lamar, Supernaw, those are the same guys. You question how long they're going to be able to chase before they get tired. Streets and Marcus Knight to the top of your screen, but they're keeping it on the ground, and why not? Jabbar Robinson makes the stop, and the running back, the freshman, Anthony Thomas, 6'2 and 229, the biggest of the tailbacks from Michigan, and they are very high on this true freshman from Winfield, Louisiana. Boy, he, he's got fullback size and tailback speed, and they think he's got pretty good hands, so he'll, he's going to be involved in the passing game, but they're going to work him in slowly. When you've got experienced players ahead of him, no need to force him in there, but he could be a good one. Well, another third down for Michigan, third and about five, and the Wolverines are five of eight on third down conversions. Greasy may have drawn Indiana offsides, and the pass is complete. Streets for the touchdown. Penalty marker down. On the far side. But I believe this is going to hold up. It looked like... Offside on the defense. Refused. Touchdown. That was the case. This shows you the experience of this Michigan team. When you get a free play, the other team's offside. You see they jump with Greasy's cadence. Go ahead and play. You've got a free play. Go for it. Don't give up. Here they throw the pass, and Streets makes a nice move there to get into the end zone. And he had to thread the needle on that throw. Joey Ellums was right there. And the extra point is good by Craig Baker. So Michigan extends its advantage to 17 to nothing. And let's head back to Studio 66 and Mike Gleason. Mike? Well, when Florida State's starting to pull away right now, Thad Busby goes to the air again, buys some time, finds his favorite receiver, Peter Warwick, smells the end zone. This one goes 37 yards for the touchdown right there. Eight plays, 75 yards. Florida State up, 20 zip over Miami. Thank you, Mike. Take another look at the touchdown pass thrown by Brian Greasy to Ty Streets. Well, he gets good protection to throw, and as you said, he just threads the needle, and Streets does a nice job. As soon as he catches that ball, turn and go north and south. Well, let me ask you, if he knows he's got offsides, he knows he's got a free play, does he throw that pass if he doesn't have Indiana offsides? Well, I, I think you still go ahead and throw it because I think he felt confident enough to get it in there. But that's the play that's called. The other thing as a quarterback is you don't always know if one of your backs moves and the penalty's going to be against you because you can't see behind you. Today's Big Ten game brought to you by GTE, official telecommunications consultant of the NCAA and the Big Ten corporate partner. And another deep kickoff by Jay Feely through the end zone. So the Hoosiers will take over at their 20-yard line. Jim Barber's got a special guest with him, Jim. Okay, thank you very much, Wayne. The legendary rocker joining us on the sidelines and a good friend of Cam Cameron. Where does the friendship begin? Well, I remember when he played uh, sports here at IU, and uh, when he got came to work here, uh, I because of always kind of these games, you know, I, I met him, and uh, 
we start playing football together on the beach in Hilton Head, South Carolina, and uh, he was always on the opposing team. People know that you attend a lot of basketball games, also a lot of football. Of course, you have the Mellencamp Pavilion here, so you put uh, your money behind your faith there with the Indiana football program. Well, uh, you know, it's uh, they came to me and they needed it, and uh, it seemed like a nice thing to do, so I did it. All right, John, anything you'd like to shamelessly plug at this point in terms of your music? No, I don't do that, but I would say that don't give up on the Hoosiers yet. This is Dan's first season. All right, very good. Thank you, John. Thank you. John Mellencamp, but well, this is go back to Wayne and Randy. Dwayne Hogan rips off an 11-yard run. Tommy Hendricks makes the stop. Nice cutback by Hogan that time. Designed to go to the right. Does a nice cutback and then a nice move. Finally, some positive yardage for Indiana on the ground. They've been very poor running the ball. They need to get that going, not only to move the ball offensively, but also to keep their defense off the field. Mellencamp Pavilion, and just as John Mellencamp said, keep the faith, the freshman, Hogan rips off 11 yards to a first down, and he gets the call again, and this time runs into stiff resistance in that Michigan defense. Sam Sword, among others, in on that stop for the Wolverines, gained barely a yard. Dehani Jones was also there for Michigan. Wayne, I got to tell you, I have a hard time envisioning John Mellencamp playing football on the beach. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> I strike me as a football type. I was marveling over the venue, Hilton Head, South Carolina, playing a little pickup football game. <laughs> That's where that friendship was born. All right. Second down. They're going to mark it as uh, very little or no gain on that play. From the 32. And Roger sets up the screen, and the freshman dropped it. Hogan could not hang on. So Indiana facing a third down and 10. As well as Hogan runs the ball, he doesn't have quite the impact in the passing game. Indiana likes to throw the ball to their backs. Chris Gall's their leading receiver, and Jason Spears, their second leading receiver. But since Hogan's been playing, they really haven't had as many opportunities to throw the ball there. Doesn't quite have as good a hand. Indiana third down, 10 yards to go. O.J. Connors at the top of your screen. Rodgers over the middle. Got the tight end, Randy Maxwell. And Maxwell cut down just short of the first down. Textbook tackle made by Dahani Jones. Gain of nine. And from the 41, Indiana facing a fourth and short. Well, as you said, just a textbook tackle. This play looked like it was going to go for the first down. Maxwell catches it. This is going to set up a fourth down here. And Indiana going to go for it on fourth and short. Indiana. Fourth downs, well, four of 12. Here's the handoff to the running back and getting the call off the left side. I believe that was Jason Spear, and he is very close to the first down. Or make that Hogan on the carry, not Spear, but Hogan. And Michigan says they stopped him. James Hall got there quickly for the Wolverines. Did he get there quick enough? Apparently he did. No gain, and at the 41-yard line of Indiana, Michigan will take over. Take a look at this replay again. The offensive line has just got to come off the ball, and Michigan does a nice job of stuffing it. And that ball looked like it was fumbled because Hogan reaches back for it, and where the spot is at the 41-yard line, I believe Hogan fumbled that ball, and that's why they didn't make the first down. So Michigan takes over, leading 17 to nothing. Chris Floyd in that offensive backfield with Clarence Williams, and Brian Greasy at the controls. Greasy looking downfield and over the middle, and he's got Jeremy Tooman for a gain of about eight yards. Chris over to make the uh, stop on that play is uh, Robinson. You just have to like Brian Greasy as a quarterback. He, he's just like a doctor that can dissect you apart. He just throws it very accurately. Perfect spot for Tooman to get the ball. Pretty good coverage that time. Greasy just puts the ball right where it needs to go. Little linebacker at the coverage on that play. Second down, and it's about two yards to go. Tripped up in the backfield was Chris uh, Floyd. He got back to the line of scrimmage and no farther, so third down coming up for Michigan. Key third down, only it's third and three. Nice position to be in from an offensive point of view where you can run, you can throw, you can throw a short pass, because Indiana's defense now needs to come with some pressure. They need to get a positive play, force a turnover, or at least force Michigan to punt. Baker getting loosened up in case he's called upon in a moment. 
Slot at the top of your screen. Michigan keeps it on the ground. Howard breaks through. Got the first down to the 29-yard line of Indiana. And a good read by Chris Howard off the left side of that line as they stretched it out. Tooman, the tight end with a key block on this play. Take a look. Number 80 in white. Jeremy Tooman does a nice job. Makes contact. Opens the hole. Pushes the guy to the inside. And now as you see Howard come through here, he is so quick, you just don't get solid hits on him. Take a look at it again. Watch the little move right there. Just enough to make Robinson miss. So on first down, a quick hitter, Chris Floyd, bumped into his own man, Hutchinson, the offensive lineman. Floyd able to bounce off and pick up a maybe a yard down to the 28-yard line. Second down coming up for Michigan. Talked about Tooman being involved in the passing game, averaging over 23 yards of reception, which leads the Wolverines. But you just saw there when you're a tight end and you play for Michigan, you better be able to block also. Michigan has been solid here today. They were a little concerned last week with their fourth quarter performance offensively, to say the least, with the three turnovers in Michigan territory. Now Greasy. The pass play broken up, penalty marker down. O.J. Spencer, the coverage on Ty Streets. He was literally in his shirt at the 23-yard line in the penalty marker throw. Pass interference, the call against the Hoosiers. Pretty good coverage to begin with that time. John Perry will explain the call. Pass interference on the defense. Place the ball out of the foul. First down. Looked like pretty good coverage. And see if this ball's thrown a little bit behind streets. And as he turns back to stop board is where O.J. Spencer runs into him and brings the interference call. Another look at it. And you're right. That pass just a little bit was thrown to the back hip. And that precipitated the uh, collision from the defender and the penalty play. First down now for Michigan at the 22-yard line. Just inside the 22. Greasy trying to a little crossover screen on the far side, Randy. That's a tough throw. And a precision throw in heavy traffic. Ty Streets, the antenna receiver. Coming up on the National Car Rental Halftime Report brought to you by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Well, let's go. Big Ten highlights. Penn State at Illinois. Iowa at Ohio State. Preview on ABC coming up later today. And National Notebook on today's big matchups around the nation. All just ahead of the National Car Rental Halftime Report with Mike Leeson. Second and ten for Michigan. And Greasy. Could have been a flag there. Robinson, and yes, indeed, a late flag on the play. Robinson wrapping up the tight end, Tooman, near the 15-yard line. And I believe they're going to get another pass interference call against Indiana. We'll take a look at this again. It's coming right at you here. Just the same quick little out route thrown to Greasy's left. Robinson looked like he had that right arm grabbed around to him and spun him around so that he couldn't release and go after the ball. Pretty good coverage there, though, for the most part, other than that. Cam Cameron's defense getting worn down here in this first half by a very efficient Michigan offense. First down for the Wolverines of the 15 of Indiana. Thomas. Touchdown. Second touchdown for the true freshman out of Winfield, Louisiana. His second touchdown of the season. 14-yard touchdown run. And Michigan extends its advantage to 23 nothing. Take a look at the block on the outside. You can't have a successful running game to the outside without good blocking. Take a look at 35 Jackson, who just gets in front of King, shields him off, and then blocks him all the way back into the end zone. That's what allows Thomas to go in untouched. Hutchinson on the flank made the first block at the line of scrimmage. Hutchinson the guard. Greg Baker's extra point is good. Michigan leading 24 nothing. Here's the blocking at the line of scrimmage. That opens the hole. And then you see the downfield block right there by Jackson. Just doing a nice job on defensive back. 
So Michigan opens up the advantage to 24 points here in this first half. Don't forget, coming up next Saturday, the Big Ten will be running wild. Illinois star running back Robert Holcomb and the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Travel to Wisconsin, where Ron Dane has been running over everyone in his tracks on way to a possible Heisman Trophy. Illinois at Wisconsin next week. Well, Wisconsin at 4-1, and one, looking to continue their winning ways. And if you haven't seen Illinois, and Robert Holcomb, he's one of the most exciting backs in the conference this year. Ron Turner in his first year at the helm at Illinois as the head coach of the Fighting Illini. Well, they've got a rough one today, Penn State. I tell you, it's getting to be where they're all rough. The balance is, that this conference has, and as deep as it is, they're all good games. Jay Feely's kick off. Terry's toward the near side. Marcus Floyd lets it float through the end zone. First down, Indiana at the Hoosier 28-yard line. We're in Bloomington, Indiana. It's homecoming weekend on a picture postcard afternoon. Big Ten football, Wayne Larravee along with Randy Wright and Jim Barber. And the Michigan Wolverines have piled up a 24 to nothing lead with just under five minutes to go in this first half. Indiana's offense is not going to get all this back in one play. They need to just have some positive plays. They need to stay within the system, execute the plays that are called, start with some first downs, then put a drive together, then try and get the ball into the end zone. But offensively, they have just absolutely got to get something going. Randy, I'm a little surprised they haven't invested more play calls in the running game. They've been more pass dominated than Pierce here today. And off play action, back to throw and under pressure. Rogers, nowhere to go. Good penetration. Josh Williams in on that play. Rob Renus and Glenn Steele, a trio, collaborate on the sack. Back inside the 15 to the 14-yard line, a loss of six. Phillips Petroleum, maker of super clean gasolines and Trump Arctic motor oil, is a proud sponsor of Big Ten football. Team up with Phillips 66 this fall to ensure your car runs at its best. Phillips 66, the performance company. Second down and 16 for Indiana. Browning, the freshman receiver in motion. Rogers screens it out, and he's got O.J. Connor. Connor picks up yardage to the 24-yard line. Sam Sword makes the stop. Clint Copenhaver was also in on that stop. Nice play by Rogers to not try and get all the yardage back on one play. It's only second down. Take half of it. Good job by Connor coming across the middle. Catches the ball, and then right here, he turns upfield. He knows he's not going to get anything going around Copenhaver. Turn it upfield, get as much as you can. Indiana, third downs and four or more. They're 12 of 18. And back to throw now. Rodgers over the middle. Got a man open. Browning. Nice move out across the 35. Withers cuts him down, but it's a Hoosier first down, and the first time they've been able to convert on third down. Well, I think we're going to have a holding penalty in the backfield that's going to wipe this out. But again, the same play Indiana just ran a minute ago, this time coming to the other side to the other receiver. I think we saw Victor Alate in the backfield, or uh, Craig Robin with the hold. Nice job by Browning coming across, catching the ball. Then you see Hogan doing a nice job downfield trying to pick somebody up to block. Let's see if we can pick up the hold there at the bottom of your screen, number 78. That's holding James on James Hall will be in the guilty party and that wipes out that play holding on the offense at the distance to the goal replay third down replay third down and back him up inside the 10 yard line to the eight well if we've seen pressure from Michigan's pass rush so far you're really going to see it on this play and if you're Jay Rogers you need to know that don't do something foolish don't try and force something just take what that defense gives you Third and about 22. Browning again in motion. Rogers to his goal line. Intercepted by Woodson. Charles Woodson with the interception of the nine-yard line. And that's exactly what he didn't want to do, Randy. Exactly what you warned him. Woodson on the interception. And Michigan takes over. 
inside the 15-yard line. But when you're down 24 to nothing and you're a young quarterback, you think you have to do it all yourself. Here he just simply forces the ball into good coverage, and Woodson jumps up, almost acts like the receiver, does a nice job of getting right in front of him and catches that ball. So Michigan starts this drive inside the 15-yard line, already leading 24 to nothing as we near the final three minutes of this first half. Working a tackle or two is Thomas, and Anthony Thomas picks up a couple of yards down near the 16-yard line. Take a look at Superna almost going out there with a the little bang up. As you can see, a couple of good hits. Robinson with a nice hit, doesn't wrap him up, and then Superna come and really delivers the blow. And a rung the bell of the freshman. He wasn't sure he was going to go out, then he's going to stay in, and now he's going out again to maybe catch his breath for a minute. So it is second down for the Michigan Wolverines at about eight yards to go. A little bit more than seven. Back to throw, Gracie. McCall in the flat breaks one tackle attempt and reaches for the first down inside the three-yard line. Patrick McCall getting the swing pass. Listen to this on the last previous play. You heard a couple of cracks there, didn't you? One when Robinson delivered and the other one from Subernaugh. Maybe they're two best hitters on the team. That's what their coaches tell us, and you can see why. Now Michigan inside the three-yard line on first and goal. And McCall again, big hole to the end zone for the touchdown. Patrick McCall puts Michigan on top 30 to nothing in this first half. Michigan again taking advantage of their speed and running to the outside. They've got Indiana back on their heels. They've just been coming off the ball very effectively this entire first half. And Indiana's defense, which has been on the field, most of it is just getting worn down and just getting tired. McCall, another true freshman out of Carson, California. Baker's extra point is good. Michigan's lead is immense. 31 to nothing. Over the Indiana Hoosiers, back to Studio 66, Mike Gleason. Well, Wayne, Michigan State is back in action today after taking last week off. They go 55 yards, five plays. Mark Bernard from five yards out. Spartans 14 zip over the Gophers. Let's go back to Bloomington. Michigan State for real, to say the least. Uh, they are one of the top five teams in the Big Ten Conference. There is no doubt about that. Take a look at the last play. Take a look at the offensive line. Just come off the ball here. Little trap play. Nice job by the tight end to open up that hole. And McCall hits it going full speed. And when you make contact, you're going to fall forward. So Michigan up big here this first half. Three plays, 14 yards. That coming following the interception by Charles Woodson that gave Michigan possession inside the 15-yard line of Indiana. Kickoff return hasn't been much of a factor in this ball game with Jay Feely booming him out of the end zone. And this one, no exception. Indiana will put it in play from the 20 yard line. And Randy Wright, when you're in this situation, if you're Cam Cameron, what do you do now? What is your approach now? Well, he's got a lot of games to play the rest of this year, and he's got a very young team coming into this season. He only had a couple of players that had ever played on offense and started before, only a total of 35 games. So he needs to start developing some consistency on that offense. You forget about the score. You, you want to execute. You want to block. You want to run. You want to catch. You tell your team, act like it's 0-0. Go out there. Let's run our offense, and let's start getting some positive things to happen. Jay Rogers, the sophomore quarterback, and again, it appears, Randy, just looking at this game, that Indiana has been more pass uh, dominated than run uh, calls here in this first half of play. It'll be interesting to see what the statistics at halftime show us. And Hogan's going nowhere. Glenn Steele, the veteran defensive end, wraps him up. No gain, may have lost a half yard. One thing Gam Cameron has told us in the past is he is not going to play this game to keep it close. He's going to do what he thinks he has to do. Michigan has pinned its opponent deep. A 9 of 21 kickoffs and 12 of 16 punts this season. Kicking game is a big factor, you know, in talking to Indiana coach uh, John Haycock, the defensive coordinator. He was mentioning what are some of the key factors in a great defense. He talked first to ball control offense, no turnovers, and the kicking game, especially net punting. 
field position so important in good defense. Well, they had it covered on the far side, and then Glenn Steele puts away Jay Rogers as he waited for a receiver to open. So back inside the 15, uh, Josh Williams, I should say, on that stop. Take a look at Steele coming from the right side of your screen. Rogers, by the time he feels his presence, he has no chance to do anything but just tuck that ball and protect against the fumble, but Steele just beats his offensive lineman. You're up 31 to nothing and still celebrating as much as they can. We've got Josh Williams on the sack and third down and long now for Indiana. Back to the 13-yard line of the Hoosiers. And they give it to Hogan. Hogan made a couple of people miss. Picks up just a few yards out across the 15-yard line as time winds down in this first half of play. Hogan on the carry. Indiana needs to get in the locker room and rehuddle, Wayne. Just what we talked about a few minutes ago. Just have your team calm down and come out and try and execute your plays. Allen Setkowski on punt formation. And Russell Shaw heading back deep to receive this one. Uh, but he's not going to get a chance to as the clock winds down to the first half comes to a close. So on a beautiful day in central Indiana, we see the best of Michigan offensive efficiency as the Wolverines lead big at halftime. Let's get out of Jim Barber. Thank you, Wayne. A very impressive second quarter. What opened things up in this game, Lloyd? Well, I think uh, we came ready to play, and, uh, you know, we're, we've uh, had good balance on offense, but I think the big thing is our defense is playing well. They caused a couple of turnovers in there that have been big. Eric Mays went to the locker room with an injury, then came back. Any latest news on him? Yeah, we're, no, we don't know yet. Okay, thank you, Lloyd. Thank you. 31 nothing at half in favor of Michigan. Back upstairs, Wayne Larrabee and Randy Wright, guys. Thank you very much, uh, Jim. Well, halftime, Michigan is leading big. It's time now to check back with Mike Leach at his Studio 66 with the National Car Rental Halftime Report. But, hey, we know where we're at. We know where we're at. Offensively, what's on the agenda for the second half? What do you want to... Well, uh, it's, it's the same thing. People have blitzed us a little bit earlier this year and given us problems, and, and give them credit. They, they, they see the same from everybody else sees. They come after us until we protect, until we block. It doesn't matter what you're going to do. I mean, there's no magic in this deal. you got to block, you got to protect. All right, thanks, Ken. Well, no question, an impressive first half for the Michigan Wolverines here at Indiana. I think you wanted me to stop there, And if you take a look okay. at uh, some of the uh, aspects of the first half of play, we thought that perhaps Indiana would invest a little bit more in play calling in the running game earlier in this ball game, but they came out kind of throwing the football. Well, they came up throwing the ball as much as they could. When they didn't have some success, they went to the run. They didn't have some success there, and then it was real tough for them to do either one. All right, let's take a look at uh, some of the highlights of the first half, and really what showed forth for Michigan defensively. They got some pressure up front, Randy. And they're doing it with just their front four. They're not having to blitz. They're not having to bring everybody act after the quarterback in order to get that pressure. And what Michigan did so well offensively in the first half of play was make judicious use of the screen pass. And this has been a big play for Michigan. Just a little screen pass. They have turned this into some big plays offensively, and it has set up some touchdowns, getting the backs involved in the passing game. The Phillips uh, first half highlights, and now to the Prestone first half statistics. Take a look at some of the numbers in the first half of this uh, ball game. Well, the one that really steps out right off the bat is the rushing yards for Indiana, minus six. They needed to come in and run the football, minus six. That's not going to get it done. All right, and again, as you take a look at the time of possession heavily in favor of Michigan, they had no turnovers in the first half of play despite holding possession for 17 minutes and 40 seconds. So the Wolverines got done what they needed to and felt they had to do here today. Absolutely. 46 plays to 25 plays. That's real dominant. We're underway in the second half. And the Hoosiers will take it out of the 20-yard line. Leaders, take a look at it. Hogan, 10 carries, just 22 yards rushing after the big day at Wisconsin last week. And Michigan, pretty good balance in their attack. And Greasy, a decent day throwing the football, hitting 14 of 22 in that first half. When both running backs, uh, for one for Indiana, one for Michigan, are your leading receivers. It tells you where the quarterbacks are going with the ball. And a first down for the Indiana Hoosiers. Football just at the 20-yard line. 
Rogers, a swing pass out into the flat, and he's got Gall across the 25 out to the 27-yard line, where he's got a gain of about eight yards. So Chris Gall, who figures prominently in the Indiana passing attack out of the backfield. Indiana, it's first half possessions. Boy, Wayne, you take a look at that. Four plays, three plays, three plays, three plays. Not many first downs at all. Of course, the fumble in there, but when you don't get anything going and you're three and out, that tells you why Michigan had so much success offensively. Indiana's defense just got worn down. Second down at about two yards to go for Indiana. As we get underway in the second half here at Bloomington. Rodgers missed his first man and gets it out to the tight end for a first down. Randy Maxwell, sophomore from Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Sam Sword makes the stop first down for the Hoosiers at the 33-yard line of Indiana. Nice job by Jay Rogers looking downfield. Nothing there. He comes back off of his primary receiver, throws a nice ball to Maxwell, not trying to get 15, 20, 25 yards on each pass play. That's unrealistic. Just take the shorter stuff, try and get into a rhythm. And Randy, I think you're right. What they'll try to do is run the elements of their offense and try to uh, really use the second half to to do some execution here to get some to execute a few plays and here's another one we expected the tight end to play a fairly prominent role and Randy Maxwell catches another pass this one out near the 40 yard line a gain of almost eight yards Marcus Ray the safety made the stop for Michigan we expected to see the tight end more in the passing game we didn't see it in the first half but we see it in the first couple of plays of the second half well when you've got Charles Woodson and Andre Weathers the two cornerbacks they do a pretty good job at taking the out side away from you you're going to have to attack the middle with your tight end and with your your running back second down and about two yards to go and now they get Hogan Hogan turn back at about the 41 yard line gain of barely a yard the lack of production in the Indiana ground game in the first half underscored the fact that really they only called 10 running plays to Hogan who was coming off a huge afternoon up in Wisconsin a week ago Hogan carried 34 times for 124 yards and two touchdowns at Madison Wisconsin last week third haven't down been, haven't been many holes today though for Hogan to run through Indiana 0 for 7 on third down conversions but it's third and one a little play action and the pass thrown away Gall, the intended receiver, well covered by Ray and Jim Barber. What do you have on the checkup of the Michigan linebacker, Eric Mays? Well, Wayne, it is the uh, problem with the left knee. It is a significant sprain, and this time the Michigan team doctors say they have scheduled an NMRI tomorrow in Ann Arbor. Obviously, he will not return today for the rest of the second half. Hopefully that MRI will be negative when they get the test back tomorrow, and Eric Mays will be back in action before this season is out. Fourth down, Indiana going for it again, and maybe a procedure problem against the Hoosiers. Either that or someone from Michigan jumped off sides, and Rob Renus came across and made contact, and let's see. Apparently, this one's going against Michigan. Prior to the snap, offside, on the defense. Five yards, penalty, first down. Let's see if we can see if the uh, nose guard jumps off here. Take a look at Rodgers and see if he gets them to jump off with his voice. It looked like there wasn't any movement, no head bob or anything, but I think with the couple of linemen for Michigan moving, listening to Cadence that time, jumping when the ball wasn't being snapped. Nice job by Rodgers doing what Greasy has been effective with earlier today. It's really an art form, isn't it? The cadence and, and drawing a defense offside as you switch up your call. Rodgers trying to make a play, able to get it away. And Michigan again brings pretty good pressure with its front. That time James Hall in on the quarterback. Rob Renus was also pushing the pocket. Take a look, Michigan this time coming with some linebackers up through. Hall comes through untouched. Rogers does a nice job of just stepping to the side to avoid him and giving him himself an alley to throw that ball away. Hall is the rush linebacker. In many defenses, he'd be called a defensive end. But uh, he's listed as a linebacker for the Wolverines. Second and 10 now for Indiana. The football across their 45. And again, the short drop and the slant to the freshman. O.J. Connor. Connor to the Michigan 46-yard line. O.J. Connor on a gain of about eight yards. Andre Weathers made the stop. It doesn't take a lot when you haven't been very successful to get your confidence back. These are just quick two, three-step drops. Throw some things. When you haven't had a lot of success, now you have a couple of completed passes. Now when you have a couple of good things, your confidence will go. O.J. Connor 
him into this afternoon's game with 13 receptions. Browning, another fresh in motion. And Hogan gets the call. And close to the first down just inside the 45-yard line. Turned back by Tommy Hendricks in that Michigan defense. This is a good example, Wayne, of, of what Cam Cameron has told us. You can have all the innovation and all the magical things in the world, but football really comes down to the blocking and the tackling and the catching and the running. And whatever you come up with, you still have to execute. And that's what he's trying to instill in the second half today is execute the play. Another fourth down call for Indiana. This time, fourth about one. Inside the Michigan 45. Double tights on the line. Rodgers oh, had gone open underneath the coverage of Weathers and would have had a first down. The pass a little too tall for the fullback. And Cameron not happy with that throw at all, apparently. So the Michigan offense will head back out of the field, and Indiana's defense, which was worn down in that first half of play, returns for the first time here in the second half. 11.06 to go, third quarter in Indiana, Michigan, Vegas. Indiana, Michigan takes over, first down, just short of its 45, and Brian Greasy at quarterback. It's the pass out to Charles Woodson. Woodson cut down from behind by Damian Gregory, but a first down for the Michigan Wolverines into Hoosier territory just outside the 35. I, to I told you they'd go back and give Woodson another chance. This time runs a nice route. Good protection for Greasy, and just because they're ahead 31 to nothing, they're not going to get out of the rhythm of their offense either. Nice pass right to Woodson. Does a good job coming back to the ball. Then he's always a threat whenever you get him in the open field with his hands on the ball. Gain of 20 yards, and the Wolverines to the 35 of Indiana. And the handoff to the running back, and that's Chris Floyd running hard off the flank of the offense. Kaiwen Supernaw got kicked in the stomach as he made the tackle on that play. Boy, these Michigan backs are rugged. One thing we talked about with Indiana is they will always play hard. You're down 31 to nothing. That defensive line, Zap there coming from his linebacker position, plays like a defensive lineman, continuing to come hard. And we've seen Greasy take a few hits today. That indeed. But Greasy has made the plays too, hasn't he? He has stood in the pocket, thrown the ball, knowing he's going to get hit, taking the hit, but more times than not, it's been a pretty accurate pass. Greasy on second down. There's the screen. Howard on the wing. Power to the 20-yard line of the first down. Make it the 19 is where they'll spot it, and that's a gain of about uh, 13 yards. This is a play Indiana ought to become fairly familiar with because Michigan has run it a lot today. A screen again being set up by the quarterback and the running back. The running back has to let the line go by him, then he can turn. Then he does a nice job of just catching it and running to the open field. When you see and you take a look at Greasy's numbers, I mean, this guy is an exceptionally accurate quarterback. This season hitting almost 70% of his passes. First down. This one was tipped and appeared and set for grabs and Supernaw almost intercepted it at the goal line. Penalty marker down. Greasy appeared to get hit, Randy, as he let that one go. I think you're right. He had somebody right in his face, and I think he got his arm hit. This flag, there was no foul. So they pick up the flag. One thing, Wayne, that's been a, a little misleading is Michigan has thrown a lot to their backs. We saw Greasy's statistics, and you see him taking the hit right there to the arm. 69% completion. They throw most of the time downfield, so that completion percentage is really a, a pretty solid when you look at the amount of times they do throw the ball downfield. That's Chris Howard out at the top of your screen, and they've got a slot to the bottom. Chris Floyd going wide. Michigan able to get to the outside here today, Randy, and that's certainly a, a testament to their speed they have. Well, they, they knew coming in, as we go back, look at Brian Greasy there this year, almost 69% ahead of some pretty good quarterbacks. Todd Collins, Jim Harbaugh, Elvis Gerbach. Hard to believe Michigan's got three quarterbacks starting in the NFL these days. Yeah, I mean, it used to be Harbaugh was really the first Michigan quarterback that got a shot to play a lot in, and he in the really, NFL. He really changed the perception of the Michigan quarterback, I think. Third down now for the Wolverines. Third and about eight. Greasy in the shotgun. Looks his eye. Greasy hit as he throws the end zone off the hands 
of Aaron Shea, the tight end out of Ottawa, Illinois. Well, you see Greasy getting up there. Boy, did he take a shot that time. Stood in the pocket and delivered a beautiful pass just over the outreach hands of Aaron Shea. Take a look at this. He sees it coming. He stands in there, takes the hit. That was a beautifully thrown pass. I believe that was Jabbar Robinson who racked him up. Now a field goal attempt coming up for Craig Baker. This would be a 35-yard field goal attempt. Out of the hold of Brian Greasy. John Jansen with the snap. Everything is clean and the kick is away. It is good. 9.41 to go. Third quarter, Michigan Tech. Three more on to its lead. It's 34 to nothing Wolverines. Is thus far 34 nothing over Indiana and Jay Feely set to resume the game and he hasn't had a kickoff return yet today <laughs> that marks that he's intact my goodness studio 66 Mike Gleason got news from Michigan State that's right Wayne the Spartans are starting to light it up Todd Schultz so rolls to his right, finds Brad Rank a wide open. Third touchdown pass for Schultz on the day. Michigan State up 28-0, and that is your GTE cut into the game. Wayne? Well, it's homecoming up at East Lansing, and Michigan State is rolling, so you know the folks will be having a good time up there tonight. Meanwhile, it's homecoming here at Indiana, but the Hoosier fans haven't had much to cheer about. The corner of uh, Memorial Stadium where the Michigan fans are has been very active however as the Wolverines have piled up a big lead Chris Gall in motion across the offense and coming back for it through the hands of O.J. Connor as Jay Rogers delivered the pass and Connor points to himself says hey that was my fault I should have had that one yeah that was a catchable ball you know Wayne there are still some things that Cam Cameron in Indiana can get out of this game you're down 34 to nothing he knows what he's got he knows where his team needs to go and he will always look at the positive side of it first of all he wants to see if his team quits or not he has told us that his team has played hard every game in every position he wants to make sure on both sides of the ball they continue to do that also he likes the pressure that his team gets put under the expectations being raised he wants them to perform no matter what score is. out of the guy and again, Rogers off play action. He's got goal. He fumbles the football and out of bounds before Michigan can retain possession. Or hang on. They're going to bring it back to the spot where it was fumbled because it was fumbled forward and no one had possession as it carried out of bounds. So it'll be Indiana football to the 25 off a gain of five. This is the kind of thing that will upset Cam Cameron more than anything else. You, you, you keep your focus, you keep your concentration, you play the game like a 0-0. Zero, zero. Those kinds of self-induced errors, the fumbles, the offsides, the foolish penalties, those are things that will drive a coach crazy when he's got a young team. You need to eliminate those things before you can become competitive. Third down and five for the Hoosiers. Rodgers. Rodgers on his own. Take it out of bounds near the 27 yard line. Gain of a couple of yards, but he's short of the first down. The Honey Jones closed quickly on the play. We have seen demonstration, Randy, of Michigan speed both on offense and defense here this afternoon. And you're seeing it from a lot of different players at every position. We've seen it in the defensive backfield, we've seen it at linebackers, we've seen it with the pass rush on offense, you've seen it from a variety of different backs. So it's just something you can't replace with that team speed. Sutkowski's punt to Russell Shaw. And it is a booming kick through the hands of Shaw. Picks it up near the one. Shaw out across the 10 yard line and down he goes at the 12. So Michigan will start this drive deep in its own territory. 8.40 to go in the third. And the Wolverines beginning to clear out this homecoming crowd in Indiana. Michigan on the ground. Clarence Williams out across the 15 yard line to the 18. Escorted to the chalk marks in rather rude fashion by Jabbar Robinson, as you would expect. Let's take a look at the Amico Big Ten leaders brought to you by Amico. You expect more from a leader. Tavian Banks is at Ohio State today. We're going to find out a lot about him and the Iowa team. Billy Dickin off to that good start for Purdue. And Brian Musso is one of the few bright spots for Northwestern thus far this season. Second down at about four. Gain of six on the previous play for Michigan. And off the uh, 
flank with Ray Jackson, and he has stood up and driven back. And there again, pursued by the Indiana defense. And you got to admire the fact that they don't appear to be a team that's quit or shut it down here despite the score. Oh, that was something that Cam Cameron and, and John Haycock, the defense coordinator, both told us they have not seen that, and when you won't see it again with a Cam Cameron team. And so far, they're going until the whistle blows. And Michigan's got a new quarterback in there now, Tom Brady, number 10. This is a guy that they are very, very high on. Brady out of San Mateo, California. Sophomore has really come on. Third down and almost 10 yards to go. Brady sets up the screen pass. Williams trying to outrun Robinson, and Robinson rides him down. That middle linebacker for the Indiana Hoosiers has been all over the field. And that time he caught up with a fleet running back, Clarence Williams. Brought him down after a gain of about uh, three or four yards. It is fourth down for Michigan. Robinson doing a nice job that time, recognizing the play early and getting out there before Williams could get his momentum going. I'm gonna see all of the uh, kids who dressed for Michigan here this afternoon. Jason Vincent, a walk on. Corey Sargent was going to be the punter for Michigan this year, but he has a bad back, so Jason Vinson, the walk-on, has gotten the call, and he's punted very well for the Wolverines coming into today's game. Been a hold-up here on the field, and I'm trying to think if the officials called for a timeout with 7.14 to go. Talking a few minutes ago about Tom Brady, the backup quarterback for Michigan. Yesterday, talking to Mike DeBoard, have you ever seen an offensive coordinator, his face light up when he was talking about a backup quarterback? He just thinks this guy is really going to be a player. And as a sophomore and Greasy's a, a senior, as Brady's got an excellent opportunity to take over the reins of quarterback for the next couple of years. And DeBoard just thinks this guy could really develop and become a, a good, solid leader and a good player. He's got great size, 6'5", 225 pounds. Be a real player. Don't forget they've got Scott Dreisbach as a junior as well. He'll be back next year, you would expect. We'll see. Michigan's got depth in that backfield, that's for sure. Both as running back and quarterback. A low snap. Vincent gets his kick away. Joey Ellums makes the catch at the 44, and he's going nowhere. Excellent coverage by the Michigan special teams. And let's go to the sidelines, Jim Barber. Thank you, Wayne. Katie Weissmiller heads up the women's team here at Indiana in Volleyball, which has been very impressive this year, unbeaten until last night. You were honored at halftime. Congratulations on this uh, exceptional 15 and 0 start. Thank you. It's been a great season. It's been a lot of fun for the players. Um, they've, it's been a competitive season. Uh, last night, we were upset by the Wisconsin Badgers, but the Big Ten's a tough place to play, and we're very encouraged with what we, what we have, a lot of young players. I imagine the ladies got a thrill out of getting a chance to, to meet the crowd at halftime and then meeting them as well. Absolutely. You know, it was great to get out, come out here. We've had a lot of support from the community, from the fans, and that's really our seventh player on the All right, thank you, Katie. Indiana 15-1 in women's volleyball. Let's get back to Wayne and Randy. Thank you very much, Jim. Dwayne Hogan on an eight-yard run. Second down coming up for Indiana. Let's get back to Mike Gleason at Studio 66. Well, Wayne, uh, Pittsburgh and Temple, Terry Murphy's having a big day. This is his 10th catch on the afternoon. Buddy coughs up the football once he gets hit. Milana Adams of Temple picks it up. Adams also has a pick. Temple still leads 14-10 over Pittsburgh. Back to Bloomington with Wayne and Randy. Indiana on second down. Calls another running play out to the 50-yard line. The Hoosiers are about a yard short of that uh, first down. And getting the call, Glenn Johnson, number 33 in your picture. Johnson missed last week's game, had an ankle injury. Wayne Larravee, along with Randy Wright and Jim Barber, it's good to have you with us on this homecoming weekend in central Indiana. Big Ten Football Memorial Stadium in Bloomington. The Indiana Hoosiers and the Michigan Wolverines. One thing you could say about the, the Hoosiers, they didn't duck anybody on homecoming. <laughs> <laughs> there are no ducks in this conference. No, no. <laughs> they took on the Michigan Wolverines. They're usually homecoming, you get somebody you can really beat like a drum, but that wasn't the case here. Little option play here, and Johnson gets the call, and it appears he's got a first down, or close to it, just across the 50-yard line. I think Johnson is one of those backs that really had a, some playing time earlier. He got hurt. That gave Wayne Hogan the opportunity to step up last week against Wisconsin. And with such a strong performance, Hogan has solidified his number one spot. 
This is what you can do with a mobile quarterback. You can run the option. He does a nice job of pitching the ball out there. Johnson does a nice job picking up just the one yard that he needed. So it's a first down for the Indiana Hoosiers. Well, I'll tell you, this Michigan defense, though, Randy, rock solid, aren't they? Very few mistakes. They've got a lot of changes, a lot of new people in there right now. Going over the top and well overthrown, Jay Rogers. Intended for the freshman wide receiver, O.J. Connor. Mike Gleason, what do you have on Florida State, Miami? Oh, Wayne, Bobby Bowden has gone to the bench, but the results are the same. Freshman Travis Miner gets in for the touchdown. It's now Florida State 30, Miami nothing. Wayne? Florida State impressive, but so has Michigan been here this afternoon. And Jay Rogers, 114 yards passing. Last week, of course, he had over 200 yards passing, had 408 yards passing a few games ago against Ball State. Rodgers waits for the pattern to open over the middle and overshot the freshman, and uh, the interception, will it stand? A diving grab made. It's going to be Michigan football. Adrian Taylor makes the interception on the overthrow of O.J. Connor by the quarterback, Jay Rodgers. One of the times where Rodgers has plenty of time and just overthrows the receiver. You can't throw the ball high or late over the middle. When you do, you give the safeties too much of a chance to react. Just a high pass right there. Taylor did a nice job of reading it and making a nice catch. So Tom Brady, a quarterback for Michigan on first down. Anthony Thomas out of play near the 31-yard line, gain of a yard or two. When you were talking about that Michigan defense and how solid they are, and I think that last interception by Taylor is a good example of how the, everybody is playing very well. That's why they're playing so well as a unit. Sure, they've got Charles Woodson, who's their star, but other than that, everybody's capable of making a play, and when you do that, you can continue that for the entire season, you're going to be very, very good. The defense in the cool zone at the moment. It's been a warm afternoon. Temperature in the 80s here in Bloomington. Second down, about nine to go. And Thomas again. We're going to get a good look at a lot of the young Michigan backs on this uh, football team. And now a late flag is Joey King got into it with a Michigan defender or a Michigan uh, running back, I believe it was. I believe he, he and Demetrius Smith went at it briefly. The flags came flying. John Perry will get it straightened out and tell us about it. Personal foul both ways, offsetting penalties. When you talk about the the offsetting penalties, it happens after the play here is a little pushing and shoving and unnecessary. Not very harmful, but still unnecessary. It was not uh, Smith the running back, but it was... Uh... Anyway, the uh, Wolverines now on third down. Third down at about eight. Brady. Got a man wide open. And got him for a first down out near the midfield marker. The reception made on the play by uh, Kevin Bryant. Patrick Shaw had the coverage. It's a first down. Nice job by Brady showing his arm strength. When you've got plenty of time in the pocket, he whips that ball out there. That ball gets all the way out to the corner in a hurry. And Say Brady doesn't have many questions about his arm strength. Wolverines of midfield marker. Motion from Aaron Wright. Anthony Thomas and Jason Zapp met him in the gap and brought him down after a gain of about five yards to the 45-yard line of Indiana. Coming up on four minutes to go in the third quarter. When you talked earlier about Michigan giving their young players a chance, when you've got Chris Howard and Chris Floyd, your starting backfield, both seniors, Clarence Williams, he's a junior, even some of the whiteouts, Russell Saw, he's a senior, High Street's a junior. You got to get those young players an opportunity to carry the ball and play when they can. On second down at about five. Thomas, a big hole to get through this time. Robinson missed him. McGrath brought him down, saving a touchdown. Anthony Thomas, when he gets 
rambling. I'll tell you what, he is not only hard to catch, but hard to bring down. A 19-yard gain to a first down. Nice big hole. Good job of blocking by the offensive line. Little trap again. They bring the guard and they bring the back over. And when you get Thomas going full speed before contact, and he, he as you said, he's tough to catch. He's tough to bring down from the front and from behind. Football near the 25-yard line. And Thomas, once again, this time is met at the flank. And Gunlia and Mandina make the stop for Indiana. So it'll be second down upcoming for Michigan. Loss of a couple of yards. Boy, it just makes it so much easier to run when you get some blocking. The play before, huge hole. Thomas breaks through for 19 yards. That time, nice job by Indiana's defensive line. Really wasn't a hole there. Second down. It's a little bit more than 11 yards to go. Michigan on the drive once again. Bryant in motion. McCall this time. Had a hole for a moment and a good move made by Damian Gregory to bring him down. So it'll be a third down for Michigan. He might have gotten a yard on that play. Third and about ten. If you're the Michigan Wolverines, this has been a very impressive performance when you consider you're coming in on the road. It's your first road game of the season. You were efficient in the first half offensively. You took advantage of your opportunities. Didn't turn the ball over. A lot of positives for this Wolverine team as they head toward the, well, the lion's share of the Big Ten schedule. Third down and Brady over the middle. And Knight, Marcus Knight makes the catch, but he's short of the first down of the 23-yard line of Indiana. What you haven't seen Michigan do today, Wayne, is the mistake, the turnover, the interception. You haven't seen the drop balls, those things that veteran players do. And Indiana will get there as their players gain that experience. Good they, coverage right here. Good coverage. You'll give them the short game because it's third and 11. Once they know where the ball's going and he catches it, come up and make the tackle. Greg Baker will try a 40-yard field goal. That's about his range. His long this year is 37. Pretty much a straight-on kick, and Baker has enough leg strength, and he's got it on the money. So Craig Baker adds another three points to the Michigan total. It's 37 to nothing, Wolverines, with a minute 31 to go in this third quarter. Now let's take a look at our NTB students of the game, brought to you by NTB National Tire and Battery. We are everything you want, nothing you expect. Brian Greasy, the Michigan quarterback fifth year senior and Aaron Warnicke strong safety for Indiana Aaron Warnicke is a player that has more starts than anybody for this Indiana defense he was strong safety came in this year with 32 starts but yet he hasn't been a starter this year he was a backup strong safety and just this week they moved him to outside linebacker said his work ethic has been wonderful and, and for a guy that has started in the past not this year He's setting a good example for some of those younger players. One of the few Hoosiers that has that kind of experience. Indiana's current starting lineup coming into today's game started a combined 35 games prior to this 1997 season. And Warnicke uh, no longer a starter on that defense, but has played a prominent role coming off the bench. Once again, Jay Feely. Let's see if he gives him a, an opportunity to return a kick. Nope. He's going to boom another one through the end zone. So Indiana will take over at the 20. Scoring drive by the Michigan Wolverines. Their second of this third quarter. Second time they've settled for a field goal. Nine plays, 48 yards, took three and a half minutes off the clock. And Baker, the 40-yard field goal, his longest of the season, and his third field goal today. Indiana's defense forcing two field goals this quarter instead of uh, letting Michigan come down and get the ball in the end zone. Michigan next week will take on Northwestern up at the big house. I think there's a little revenge on their mind after the last two seasons. Mm, no question. Northwestern has won close ball games against Michigan the last two seasons. Jay Rogers still in a quarterback. Randy Maxwell in motion, and Rogers looking that way. Now Rogers flushed. Gets it away to O.J. Connor. Connor brought down short of the line of scrimmage. Loss of two. William Peterson made the stop for Michigan. And to get inside the huddle of your favorite Big Ten team, Go online at www.big10.org for all the football and conference news from around the Big Ten. That's something that Randy uh, 
Wright does often on that computer. You're constantly in the huddle, aren't you, in the Big Ten? You've got more dots and more W's in that little <laughs> saying than, than I've said in three years. But Jim Barber and I are still trying to figure out the W's and the dots and where they go. Second down at about 12. Rodgers, little dump-off pass. Glenn Johnson, nowhere to go. And Michigan's uh, fresh troops on defense hem him in after a gain of a couple of yards. Back to Jim Barber, Jim. Thank you, Wayne. And Brian Greasy done for the rest of the day because of Michigan's 37-0 lead. He has a uh, strained muscle on the right side. Took a couple of big hits during the game. He was limping as he took to the sidelines. Continue to play. Obviously, won't play the rest of the way. And the docs say he will be okay. All right, Jim. And Brian Greasy, a good afternoon of work for him. Take a look, career leaders. Well, this, this is Wayne from a guy that didn't even start last year. Third down and a little bit more than nine yards to go. And running for his life is Jay Rogers. And down he goes, short of the line of scrimmage, a loss of a yard or two. Third period has wound to a close. Michigan outscored Indiana 6 0 in the third quarter. Grab to a 31 0 halftime lead. It's 37 0 Michigan heading to the fourth. Bloomington, Indiana, Michigan leading 37-0 as we head to the fourth quarter. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Jim Barber, good to have you with us. Good size homecoming crowd was on hand here, but the Wolverines in their performance kind of cleaned the stands a little bit. Russell Shaw back deep to receive this punt from Alan Sutkowski, the all-time leading punter in Hoosier history. Sutkowski mishandled that snap a little bit, but got a beautiful punt away right at Shaw. The line drive kick, Shaw able to make something of it. And look at this. Out across the 45-yard line, Russell Shaw. Making like Charles Woodson, and Michigan will start this next drive. Out across the Wolverine at 45 near the 47. Break of the action. We'll be right back. First down for the Michigan Wolverine to the 46 of Michigan. And Brady back to throw. Had a man wide open. The pass sails wide of the mark. Incomplete. That was Marcus Knight, the antenna receiver. Brady's pass seemed to wobble a bit there, Randy. Seemed to wobble quite a bit. And big difference in when you're thrown into the wind like that. Let's go back to the studio. Mike Leeson. Mike? Okay, Wayne. Florida State defense pitching the shutout today. Shevin Smith intercepts Ryan Clemens, setting up another score. Miami's been held to 52 yards of total offense today. They're in fourth. Same scores as yours. 37 zip. Florida State. Wayne? 52 yards of offense for Miami. My goodness. And the freshman, Thomas, rope down across the 46 out near the 49-yard line. Curtis Randall L. made the stop. And look at the third quarter numbers, or the stats through three quarters, I should say. Michigan on the ground. Indiana, again, a lot when sacks come off the running game. Subtract that yardage from the running game. Passing yardage. Michigan getting good production there and total yardage and again the turnover situation three for Indiana none for Michigan here today it is third down Brady looking to improvise screens it out he's got a first down Thomas fumbled the football as he was brought down I believe Indiana's got it Anthony Thomas the freshman off a beautiful pass from quarterback Tom Brady fumble the football and the Hoosiers apparently have it started out as a nice play by Brady to come out and break contain and find Thomas but good job by Indiana's pursuit to catch up to Thomas knock that ball loose and force the turnover James Lamar appeared to be the man to recover the football the penalty is against Michigan for an ineligible receiver downfield And now John Perry has squared it. Disregard the flag. There is no foul on the play. Pass not across the line of scrimmage. First down, Indiana. All right. So they pick up the flag. Take a look at the end of the play here. The cut back by Thomas. Well, when you're waving that football and the hit from behind triggered it loose. Charles on Goodman, number 21, continuing to try on the play. Fights from behind. Catches up to Thomas and squats that ball loose. All out of the shotgun now. Earl Hannaford in at quarterback. He's a redshirt freshman from Martinsville, Indiana. Hannaford hits his man out across the 30-yard line. Ben Klumeyer, the tight end, out to the 31-yard line. Hannaford 
A parade all America selection in 1995 was Indiana's Mr. Football. And he's the yardage record holder in passing in Indiana football. Watch it again, Randy. Start out with a nice read. Just dumps the ball right over to Klusmeyer, who continues to fight for anything he can get. And, you know, Ben Klusmeyer is the story here at Indiana also. A senior tight end started 10 games last year. This year, hadn't played very much at all with Randy Maxwell taking the majority of the plays. Second down and about three yards to go. Hanford pumps once and now hits his man. He's got a first down. That's Gene Paul, a junior from Naples, Florida. Gene Paul with a reception up at the 45-yard line. And, of course, uh, Gene Paul has somewhat of a career connection with Cam Cameron. Cam Cameron played for both the football squad and the basketball squad here at Indiana. Gene Paul has seen action on both sides of the parking lot here in Bloomington as well. And Paul has been hurt. This is some of the uh, action that we're seeing today at play right now, but he has not played very much all year. He's really the only receiver on Indiana's roster with any experience. Paul, a member of the IU basketball squad the last couple of seasons as a walk-on. Hannaford sets up a screen play. Glenn Johnson cutting it back. And he's out to the 50-yard line, gain of about five. The Honey Jones on the stop for the Michigan Wolverines. Hannaford back at quarterback, as you said, he came out of high school, Wayne, so highly recruited, All-American, and such high expectations, really hasn't had a chance to play very much. And Jay Rogers, who started in the middle of last season, has really played uh, fairly well up until this point and much more mobile than a Hannaford. And you can see where Rogers' running ability has helped him out. Hannaford, big reason why he hasn't seen as much action. Johnson inside Wolverine territory. It'll be third down and short coming up. Assembly Hall, where the basketball team plays. And as you pan back across the parking lot, to the rim of Memorial Stadium. Cam Cameron knows both sides of the parking lot here in Bloomington, as he says. He played for both the football squad and the basketball squad, and he says what he'd like to build on this side of the parking lot is the same kind of mentality they have on the other side of Assembly Hall. And that's what he'll try to instill in his football team. They took no solace to the moral victory of that game last week. Glenn Johnson cartwheeled in his effort to get a first down. It's going to be fourth down coming up. That's a good point, Wayne. He, Cam Cameron will tell you that winning starts mentally. You have to think you can do it, then you have to get the players. Here you see Michigan coming hard with their surge from their defensive line. Johnson doing the little 360 over the air there that time, <laughs> coming up short. Fourth down, a short yarded situation, and Hannaford looks to the sideline to get the play. Well, you're right, Randy. I mean, Cam Cameron said it's a mental thing. It, it's a, that's the whole, factor that he's trying to build in this football program. And Hannaford on a keeper. Reaches for the first down in front of the Michigan bank. At the Wolverine 45-yard line. So Earl Hannaford gets it done. A nice fake here to Johnson in the backfield. Hannaford got just enough speed to get to that first down marker. Ian Gold over to make the stop. So Indiana trying to move the football here, trying to get some things done. There's a look at Cam Cameron. Again, the difference between winners and losers, Randy, is often, obviously there's physical talent on this level, obviously, but the other factor is the mental aspect of the game, and that's what Cam Cameron talked about yesterday. Hannaford looking to go downfield, everybody covered. Hannaford on his own now. And hammered out of bounds near the 43-yard line. The Studio 66, Mike Gleason, what's happening with Auburn? Well, Wayne, Damian Craig just strikes again. This time he goes to Tyron Goodson. Now, Goodson will feel this tomorrow. But Craig becomes the fourth player in Auburn history with 30 touchdown passes. 14-6 Tigers. Earl Hannaford got a tough couple of yards just a moment ago. You, you learn quickly, you get out of bounds when you can. You don't need to take those kind of hits. You're gonna mark it as a gain of one, it's second and nine. Hannaford off play action. Looking downfield, off the hands of the antenna receiver on the play, Gene Paul. Hannaford really drilled that one. And there's a look at Gene Paul. 
Would have been a tough catch for Gene Paul. One thing Hannaford does, as you look at him here, he's staring the receiver down. You pump, and then he doesn't throw the ball. And when you go that way, you give the defense a little more time to close because they're reading your eyes as you're looking at the receiver. That time, Paul and the, and the ball and the contact all got there at the same time. And Randy, on the replay, I didn't see it live, but on the replay, you could see that ball. He almost tried to throw it too hard. It was wobbling as it got the receiver. Not an easy catch for the receiver. Kind of a knuckleball coming at him. Third down now. Third and nine. Michigan coming on a blitz. They picked it up well. Hannaford's pass again wobbles, and this time it's behind the receiver decidedly at the 30-yard line. Luzmeyer, the intended receiver, and it's fourth down for Indiana. Indiana does a nice job of picking up this blitz. The back step in there and pick that up. Really, a lot of time for Hannaford to throw it in an open receiver. Once again, the ball just sails too high on him, and Indiana fortunate that ball didn't get intercepted. Hannaford threw for over 11,000 yards in his high school career. Third all-time nationally with 111 touchdowns. Now it's fourth down and nine for Indiana. Through the hands of Hannaford, he recovers. Trying to hit his man over the middle on the crossing pattern, Marcus Floyd. Through the hands of Floyd, and Michigan will take over at the Wolverine 43. This game has been dominated by the Michigan Wolverines, 37 to nothing over the homestanding Hoosiers. Going next week. Meanwhile, Michigan leading big here takes over from the Wolverine 43-yard line. Tom Brady in relief of Brian Greasy at quarterback for Michigan. The Wolverines have emptied out their bench, basically. Brady trying to force that one in there. Nice play made by O.J. Spencer, intended for Aaron Wright. First plus financial game summary. Michigan, as we mentioned, has had a good day offensively, to say the least. Their defense has smothered the Hoosiers. Greasy, a very efficient afternoon. Third down conversions. Indiana has been absolutely awful in that category, and that's one of the reasons why they've been unable to sustain anything here today. Second down, and the Wolverines call on Patrick McCall. And the call out near the midfield marker on the near sideline. Let's go back to Jim Barber. Thank you, Wayne. Here on the sidelines, Dr. Miles Brand, the president of Indiana University, joins us. I know this is a rough afternoon at the... Uh, at the ranch here, but still you've got a lot of faith in the guy you have selected to lead this football team. Cam Cameron's an excellent coach. We'll have patience with him. We're very proud of our student athletes. We're very proud of our university. And we're sure we'll do well in the future. The good, good university, good football team will succeed in the end. I know one of his ambitions, besides winning, which is the obvious one, is to fill the stadium. Can he do it? Uh, we had a very good attendance today. I think the fans like this kind of football. I think they'll stand behind us, yes. You enjoy seeing this type of football, basketball sometimes, as they call it, uh, on the football field? Oh, uh, this is exciting football. It's uh, run and pass. Kids are working hard. They're doing well. Miles, our pleasure. Thanks for joining us on the sideline. You bet. My let's pleasure. Let's head back upstairs to Wayne and Randy. Thank you very much, Jim. A little swing pass to Patrick McCall gets a first down for Michigan in Indiana territory at the 41 yard line. So the Wolverines continue their march. 9.06 left to go. And they're getting a lot of their young people experience here in this conference opener for Michigan. And Anthony Thomas breaks one tackle and another. And is wrapped up as he noses the football just inside the 40 yard line to the 39. Good shot of gang tank tackling that time by Indiana, down 37 to nothing, and yet you see six, seven red jerseys coming over to the ball, getting a helmet in on the tackle. Gain of a couple of yards. It's second down coming up for Michigan. And we get a look at the freshman. Anthony Thomas, they are, as we mentioned, very high on him. He's a tailback and place kicker in high school. Gained over 7,500 yards rushing. 93 touchdowns in his high school career. You don't often see that combination. Running back, place kicker? No, that, that's, that's rare. Second down at about eight. Brady again. Boy, the swing pass has been open all day into the flat. And nice tackle made of the open field by McGrath on Anthony Thomas. 
You don't see that combination, but I don't think Michigan had any question where they were going to play him at if it came down to having to choose. You know, we're seeing a lot of true freshmen on the field. For Indiana, the reason is obvious. They don't have a lot of experienced senior players or junior players in their program. For Michigan, you're seeing more true freshmen because it is a sign of the times, especially at the, uh, you know, we talked to Lloyd Carr about this, especially at the skill position uh, areas. You may not have a kid play five years in his uh, college career, spend five years in his college career. He may spend four, maybe he leaves after three years, especially the skilled people. Third down, Brady under pressure, locked up on the play. Nick Abruzzo, defensive end, gets a sack for Indiana. Back to the midfield marker are the Wolverines. Take a look at this Indiana defense coming through, putting pressure on Brady. He doesn't have anywhere to go with the ball, and Abruzzo does a nice job of wrapping him up. I mean, what you were talking about, I think there are two reasons why you see so many young players. Number one, like you mentioned, players may not stay four or five years. They're going to leave early. And secondly, you have to promise the kid now that he's going to play early because kids want to play as freshmen. They want to get a chance to play right away. So in order to do that, you got to get a promise them that he'll have an opportunity. Indiana will take this offensive opportunity first and 10 from their 14-yard line when we resume in Bloomington. Completion of this fourth quarter. Wayne Larravee, Randy Wright, Jim Barber. It's homecoming in Bloomington, Indiana at Memorial Stadium. And we have 6.55 left to go, fourth quarter. Earl Hannaford in a quarterback in place of Jay Rogers for the Hoosiers and the handoff to Gattis, and he is nabbed. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> yeah, that was a jailbreak up front. We'll make that grubs on the uh, carry. And Nate Miller in on that stop for Michigan. Deion Grubbs, the ball carrier. Brian Greasy is our Dodge player of the game. A look at his numbers. An efficient passing afternoon for Greasy. And a lot of it came in little screen passes and dump off passes over the middle. This one to Ty Street scored a touchdown. Greasy worked that short passing game to perfect it here today. Penalty markers down early and they hold up the action on second and 14 for Indiana. So this will go against the Hoosiers. Well, Greasy is just perfect for that Michigan offense. He's got so much talent around him that he does a nice job of putting the ball where it needs to be, uh, throws the ball very well, makes very, very good decisions. He's just excellent for this system. Right over the snap, ball start on the offense, the distance to the goal, still second down. In talking with Mike DeBoard, the uh, Michigan offensive coordinator, he was discussing Brian Greasy and mentioning how the kid makes just great decisions every time with the ball. He's a fifth-year senior, as we mentioned earlier today. He dedicated himself to come back this season and take the number one job, and, and that's exactly what he's done. And his decision-making process is what has been so impressive to the Michigan people. He comes in, he studies a lot of game film. He knows his opponent as well as the coaching staff. Grubbs gets the call, and Deion Grubbs goes wide and out of bounds near the 10-yard line. Eric Wilson forced him out. And look, some smiles on that Michigan sideline. Last week at this time, they were trying to hang on against Notre Dame, committing uh, one turnover after another. You look at Lord Carr, until this game is over, you're not going to know whether they're ahead or not. He doesn't show a lot of emotion anytime, especially during the middle of a game. Learn that from Bo Schembechler, you think? <laughs> I would think so. As long as the clock was still ticking, Bo was very serious about what was going on. Third down for Indiana, about 14 yards to go for the Hoosiers. David Ballou was the man in motion. Hannaford looking to the air. Hits to Ballou with the pass, and he is wrapped up immediately on the play by Ian Gold, the linebacker. There's a penalty marker down. Michigan today, as we mentioned, with the one turnover so far in the ball game today by Michigan, it was inconsequential and it happened in the second half when Michigan was well in it, well ahead. And the penalties, they've done a pretty good job of the penalty department. They were concerned about that coming in, that their offense has been plagued by turnovers and penalties in recent weeks, but today they have been very good. In the offense, penalty is used. We'll take the result of the play, fourth down. So fourth down, and Alan Sitkowski will come on once again in punt formation. Just inside of five minutes to go in the ball game. Whitley back deep to receive this punt from Sitkowski. 
And he gets away a beautiful spiral. Whitley over the shoulder it goes. Whitley trying to chase down and does near the 13. Trying to change direction. Got a great block on the flank. And he's out to the 20 yard line. Outstanding block made by William Peterson. Michigan will start near its 20 yard line when we resume in the fourth quarter. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Jim Barber, Michigan in command with four and a half minutes to go in the football game. Our Outback Steakhouse, outstanding back of the game. Chris Howard of the Michigan Wolverines. Watch him right here on this three-yard touchdown run of the second quarter. This to put Michigan up 9-0. The extra point made it 10-0, and the Wolverines were up to the races from there. They led 3-0 at the end of one quarter and had built that lead up to 31-0 at halftime. Chris Howard, our Outback back of the game. Very effective in the passing game, too. Michigan running a lot of screens, a lot of swing passes. Howard having a big day on the ground and through the air. Jason Kapsner, the new quarterback, in for Michigan. And getting the call down the sidelines, Ray Jackson. Yet another true freshman running back for Michigan. Boy, they just keep wheeling him out there, don't they? <laughs> I'll tell you the depth, the penalty marker down on this play, but the depth that Michigan has in the backfield is really something. And, and that's something that a lot of teams don't have now is the depth because of the 85 scholarships and because of uh, several other things. But Jackson, he's been very impressive. Anthony Thomas, a true freshman, very impressive. I'd just like to have Ray Jackson and Anthony Thomas, both true freshmen, starting <laughs> in your backfield. I think you'd find room for him, as Lloyd Carr did in Michigan. It, it's just that with a program like Michigan, you're not used to seeing true freshmen play much. Holding on the offense. Ten yards from the spot of the ball. Replay, first down. So the holding penalty uh, wipes out what might have been a first down and leaves first down. And first down at about 12 yards to go. Back at the 17-yard line. Kempster at quarterback. Kapsner going downfield this time, and he's got his man, Marcus Knight. One of the bigger pass plays of the day for Michigan out to the 37-yard line. So first down Michigan on a 20-yard pass play. Brady, again, having success, throwing the ball to the outside, a corner route. He gets good protection, puts a lot of air under the ball. When you throw the ball like that as a quarterback, you put air underneath it. You give the receiver a chance to adjust to it. Doesn't have to be a perfectly thrown ball, but Jasper capture that time nice job so Michigan goes on a first down coming up on four minutes to go in the football game nice move by Jackson he was hit hard and driven down by Nick Abruzzo and a gain of about seven or eight yards let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Michigan Wolverines and they are just getting into the lion's share of their schedule now in, in Big Ten play. Northwestern next week at home. Iowa, that'll be a big game. Then Iowa-Michigan State, back-to-back. -back, and then uh, you're going to find later in November, Penn State and Wisconsin back-to-back. -back, so. And what's not on there? Ohio State. Last game at Ohio State. I think it's at Ohio State. A handoff on the running play up the middle. Demetrius Smith, the big pullback, gets the call. If I'm not mistaken... It's at Ann Arbor. Is it at Ann Arbor? Year. Yes, they beat them in uh, Columbus last year. The Indiana Hoosiers upcoming schedule. Michigan State will be up next for the Hoosiers. Then at Ohio State, at Iowa, Illinois at home, then Minnesota and Purdue. So first down for the Michigan Wolverines at the 49-yard line. And again, as you mentioned, Randy, Michigan will finish up with Ohio State per usual in one of the uh, best traditional rivalries in college football. Michigan has owned that rivalry the last several years. John Cooper having outstanding teams at Ohio State, but Michigan has owned that series the last seven, eight, nine years. Tate Shansky, the latest Michigan runner to get a call. He is a uh, sophomore. Redshirt sophomore out of a Perry, Michigan. You, you watch this Michigan team offensively, defensively, special teams. They just don't seem to have a weakness. Very solid throughout, Randy, and I think their defense is better than solid. I really do. And they've done a great job thus far this season. Once again, the straight ahead dive, and the Michigan Wolverines continue to move the clock. It'll be third down and short coming up. And Jackson got the call that time. 
whenever you've got a Charles Woodson on your defense, you've got a guy that can create big plays, whether it be coming up and making a big hit, uh, taking your best receiver totally out of the game, or making the interception. He's just a guy that can change your offensive game plan. Third down, about a yard to go for Michigan. Football just outside the Indiana 46. Oh, and Jackson slipped a defender. Curtis Randall L makes the tackle, but not before Michigan moves the chains. Inside of two minutes left to go. When you look at what the Michigan defense has done, held Colorado to three points of the opener, Baylor to three points, and then Notre Dame did get 14 points on them. But what was impressive about that game, Randy, was in the fourth quarter, three times the Michigan offense turned over the football in Michigan territory and three times in the fourth quarter the Michigan defense turned the Irish away the other thing I think is very important also is coming into this game Michigan had played three games there had only been five times the opponent had the ball inside the 20 yard line Kapsner looking for a receiver nearly picked away Curtis Randall L whose brother Antoine is going to be a quarterback in this program before it's all said and done he's red shirting this year Nearly picked that away. Randall L. moved to the strong safety position for Indiana uh, this week, and he gives them a good coverage man at that strong safety spot. A minute 24 to go in the game. Much more like a, a linebacker. He, he can hit. He's got good coverage ability. He's going to be a good addition to them back there. Second down at 10 yards to go now for the Wolverines. Kampsner from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Jackson breaks a tackle and gets inside the 35 down near the 32-yard line. Ray Jackson, an impressive runner as well. Don't forget, next week, we will be back in Madison, Wisconsin. Robert Holcomb leads the fighting line high of Illinois into Madison to take on the Great Dane, Ron Dane, and the Wisconsin Badgers. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Big Ten football, Illinois, Wisconsin next week. Ron Dane healthy again after being banged up earlier in the year. We saw him last week, ran for over 200 yards, and he's an awfully powerful back. You ever seen a guy that big runs that fast? Mm. Quickness, that's the thing that he has that is special. Not only is he big, he's quick. Randall L. shaking up on the play is assisted off the field 60 seconds remaining make it 70 seconds remaining of this football game so Michigan will be off to a 4-0 start with a home engagement against Northwestern next week and the Indiana Hoosiers will fall to one and four on the campaign and Michigan on third down the football gets it back and then he's bulldog down back outside the 40 yard line our Las Vegas tourism play of the game and take a look at it this is what Michigan did so well here today offensively great timing on the screen quick pass over to Floyd he got a block in front and made the turn around that block by Chris Seaman and motored down the sidelines to help set up another Michigan score set up one of the early Michigan touchdowns but it was that play more than any other play today Wayne that really did the damage to Indiana's defense whether it was Floyd or Howard that screen play they ran to perfection final seconds uh, ticking away Jason Vinson in punt formation I don't know if you'll even get it off but let's see and here's the snap he does get it away as time winds down to this football game the Michigan Wolverines did what they had to do on the road. They came in, they established control of this football game in the second quarter, and stormed to a 37-0 victory over the Indiana Hoosiers. Cam Cameron and Lloyd Carr spent some time together on the Michigan staff not long ago. Shake hands with the 50-yard line, and the Wolverines keep their record unblemished at 4-0. Next week, the Big Ten will be running wild as Illinois star running back Robert Holcomb travels to Wisconsin where Ron Dane has been running over every one of his tracks. For Randy Wright and Jim Barber, Wayne Larrabee saying so long from Bloomington. For our entire crew, let's send it back to Studio 66 and Mike Leeson.
Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Wayne. Uh, Wayne Larravee, Randy Wright, Jim Barber, nice job from Bloomington, Indiana. 37 to nothing on Michigan over Indiana today. Next week, the Wolverines head home. They have Northwestern. Doesn't get any easier for the Hoosiers. They're also at home against Michigan State. 28 points in the second quarter, deadly for Indiana today. Before we say goodbye, we'll update the scoreboard after this. Start and uh, we didn't uh, play the way we wanted in the first quarter and uh, it was critical for us to come out and get some points on the board. And once we do that, we know our defense can take over. Just moments ago, you shook hands with Cam Cameron, who was associated with Michigan for the longest time. It's interesting, he said his own quarterback's getting inspiration from you with all the uh, game film that you study during the week. Well, uh, yeah, Cam was my coach for a year, and uh, I've learned a lot from him, and uh, I know that he's going to do well here and that uh, Indiana's program is in good hands.